All right. Welcome to another episode of To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. Make sure you subscribe, give us a like, hit the bell, uh, check us out on social media. Today on the podcast, my good friend, Jason Constantine. What's up, dude? Uh, How you been? Been great, man. How about yourself? Great, man. Long time. I know. It's been too long, too man. Long. It's been a Absolutely couple years, I think, since I've seen you. Yeah. It's got to be. Yeah. I mean, you know, fucking pandemic, right? So... And besides yeah. that, I think we were we were doing all right keeping in touch. But I did de- yeah. disappear into the corporate world for a while. Oh, I disappeared for a while too, man. Yeah, I just vanished off the face of the planet. Yeah, I know, man. It's good I to see you. Good to see you too, man. Yeah, and yes, get, good to see Brandy again as well. Hell yeah, Came dude. Into the studio today, man. I miss you guys. I miss you too, dude. Yeah, dude. We had so much fun back in the day, bro. So oh. much crazy shit. I know that. <laughs> Fucking jamming over a vamp. Hell yeah, dude. The Primus, the Primus show, thing. The original guitar player, man. But, wow. <laughs> Not the better one, but the original. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think, uh, dude, all three of you guys were amazing. I was just it such was a fun, lucky dude. guy to have. I had you, I had Mark Webb, Spidey, and then Anthony, and then Anthony yeah. Gomez, of course, who oh, yeah. is just fucking, we grew up playing music together. Oh, yeah. So we learned Killers. how to play guitar together. So that's, all killer dudes. Yeah. But yeah, it was. Fun. I just talked to Mark too the other day. Did you? Yeah. What was Mark yeah. up to? I got to get him on this thing. I don't. We would just we would, we always bullshit about gear. Yeah. Constantly, it's all we ever talk about. Yeah. You know? He's setting himself up with a little studio, so he's asking some questions about preamps and all that good fun stuff. Oh, uh, preamps are important. Yeah, absolutely. Thing. He's like, I'm thinking about going 500 series and yada yada. Oh. You know, so I was like, oh, look at you getting all fancy. Nice. <laughs> yeah, he always was a bit of a gearhead, man. He always yeah. had cool toys to play. Absolutely. I loved what Spider does. D- me too. Yeah. And great guitar player. Dude. Great dude, great guitar player. Oh, freaking yeah. shredder, man. Absolutely. Total bro. shredder. Monster. Dude, so. Monster. And you're not so shabby yourself, eh. man. Eh, yeah, I'm okay. Whatever, bro. I'm all right. Yeah. I'm all right. Yeah, you're pretty fan. Are you are you are you playing in anything right now? Nothing. Nothing? I'm I'm kind of done with the band thing, dude. Yeah? Yeah. If We've talked about it, and the only thing I'm going to do is, if it winds up happening, is we're going to do, um, if Jeff actually gets it sorted, um, I'll be playing rhythm guitar for him live. Oh, really? Yeah. For uh, for, for his solo For stuff. his solo thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Nice. And I if, think you actually brought a, a yes, singer, Yes, I right? did. Yeah, and yeah. autographed Jeff Duncan Wanderlust Ooh. CD. I thank you, my good friend. On our new record label, Tone House. Tone House Records. Awesome. I'm going to have to pull up a, a website here then. That's awesome. Oh, man. I love Jeff Duncan. Oh, me too. Jeff dude. Duncan's amazing. I was just working with him. He was doing the um, Raiderhead. Raiderhead band. thing Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. That's killer, by I the saw way. I started watching Billy. Oh, dude. Masonette and all of those guys, you know. Um, I've been working with Masonette for years. You know, we had an original band together for a while and. Him, James, and I, along with Michael T. Ross, did a couple things over the pandemic. You know, just some like YouTube videos, some original music stuff. Yeah. And um, we got some we got some other stuff we're working on too. That that's gonna be pretty cool. It's not really anything official. It's just it's just something to kill time. Yeah. I mean, you know, you know that's what we're here doing. Fucking. James and him write some tunes, and they're like, "Yo, put some guitar on this." I'm like, All right. I love it. Pretty simple. Wow, they're lucky to have a guitar player as talented as you, my friend. That's uh, James is no slouch either. Dude. Yeah, he's a great guitar player too, man. Yeah, you know, uh, we we got some good uh, musicians in Vegas, man. It's one of the beauties really of this town. Do, so many talented artists come to this town, yeah. and like the the bands that end up like being created and then dispersing a couple of years later are just always incredible. happens. Yeah. Always happens. Everybody's so busy. It is. Yeah, it, everybody's always got something going on. You know. The Facebook feed is always full of somebody gigging somewhere. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's nice to see that back now that we didn't have it for a year and a half. God, I know. It's, it's rough, dude. It sucked. It I was mean, really bad. That's what life's all about is yeah. playing gigs and having fun. And like, you know, I just got completely squashed, man. It really sucked. I don't know what to do. I'm glad I was able to put this thing together to keep my sanity No, absolutely. Going, you know, I, d- I dove in head first into making product videos for Line 6. Oh, cool. <clears throat> I did that for almost a year. That's awesome. You know, they had a new unit come out called the Pod Go, and I did a bunch of demo videos for that and set up a Facebook group. It's got like 5,000 people in it, you know, all coming wow. along. Wow. Like, yeah, it's pretty cool. It it got me to it's got me got me to two thousand subscribers on YouTube, so I'm not gonna complain. Nice, man. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Not uh-huh. gonna they call me the podfather. The podfather. <laughs> the podfather. Oh snap. <laughs> it's funny, dude. 
you know, just talking to all these dudes from all over the world, you know, all talking about guitar. It's, it's gear geek shit, dude. You know how it is. Always that gear geek shit. Love that stuff. That's funny. The pod father. The or, pod what's your, uh, what's your handle on YouTube? Uh, Jason Constantine official. Okay. I'm looking you up, son. Uh Oh, the most recent stuff has been a lot of video game content because I've been playing a lot of video games recently. <laughs> what you playing? Um, there's a new MMO coming out called New World. Oh, yeah, I have heard of that. Yeah, it's really cool, man. We've been checking that out. We got we got called into beta test it and did a whole bunch of shit with that. I've been doing the beta testing gaming things for years, man. I started way back in the early days with World of Warcraft. Oh, dude, World of Warcraft's dope. Yeah, dude, I played it. I played that game for almost twenty years, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's squeezing uh, it between all the other bullshit I'm doing. That's one of those addictive ones, man. It is. It'll get it you. Is. It'll get you hooked forever, right there. Absolutely. Man. But you know, other than that, it's been just just the recording studio thing. You know, rocking that at the house, having fun with that. Um, just finished a project with the guys from Wook Garden. They got a five song EP. Uh, yeah, five song EP coming. Oh yeah, so I was, I'm, I'm, just I'm talking to Rockstar Bar about getting them in there, man. Cool. Yeah, awesome. I really want them to bring it. I love those fresh guys, flavor. Man. Yeah, I love those dudes. Yeah. You know, Dom's a great guy. I don't. I don't know about Sean though. No, I don't know about that <laughs> Sean guy. <laughs> they're great. You know, they're, they're going to stop by. The, they're stopping by the house actually tomorrow. They want to do. There, there's a couple of little tweaks they want to make to the final mixes. So I was like, all right, come on by. That's how it always goes, yeah, man. it always goes. It's been so bad. We've always... been back and forth three times already. Yeah. You know, I was just like, screw it. You know what? Come in and we'll just sit down and we'll get it the way exactly you want it. And then we'll be good to go. Yeah. You know, so normally I, I don't do like the, the hours early, man. Yeah. yeah, I don't either. Man. Nah, it, does, it, does, it doesn't bother me, yeah. you know, especially for guys like that, because they're not guys that are going to screw around and waste time. Yeah. You know, they don't. They come in, they're prepared, they're ready to go, they get all this shit done, and it's nice and easy. I mean, we did the drums for five songs in four hours. Oh, oh wow. They, boom. They were, Jay was done. Out, man. Yeah, Jay was done. You know, he knew exactly what he wanted, new heads on the kit, we tuned it up real quick, got it all sounding good under the mics, and then he just played through the songs one or two times each song, and boom, we're done. That's awesome. You know, Jay's a killer drummer, dude. Killer drummer. Yeah, that's how it was with you the know. Dirty Paradise. I did that uh, that last Dirty mm -hmm. Paradise thing, that we, and they just came in, they knew what they were doing, and it was just... Snapping Donnie's it a beast, out, man. Bro. Yeah. Donnie is a beast. Oh, yeah. He's awesome, man. I miss that band. But I miss it, that band a lot. Yeah, they were they were going to be something. They were, dude, I had them ready to go to South by Southwest. I talked to my yeah. guy that I knew at South by Southwest. Oh, they man. were going to go, and like a month before it happened, the whole thing disintegrated. I yeah. was just like, damn it. Too much partying, man. And they <laughs> were making too much money on Fremont Street. <laughs> you know? Until they, they got were, kicked off of yeah. Fremont. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, uh, they were a great band though, dude. Absolutely great band. You know, yeah. it, it, there's so much good original music here that just doesn't get the credit it deserves. It's man. hard. Well, like you know, I, I always say it's uh, it's one thing to be like good and talented, but it's another thing to actually put in the the time right? that it requires. Because it's like you need to exist on the scene for like five years. Before oh yeah. You really become a serious entity, and then you have to keep a band together for five years. That's like friggin' impossible. <laughs> it's really hard, especially uh, here. Yeah, it's not easy, dude. And then you, ha you know, you have to stay relevant. You have to be yeah. out on the scene all the time, all the time, for that whole stint. And then it's like now you have the potential to actually become something, man. Yeah, I haven't done anything in the scene in over over three years. Nothing. Yeah, I had a small stint with Leon X we did for a little while. That happened during the pandemic, and that found it falling apart for a little while. That wound up falling apart. We um, just had her on the podcast. Oh, cool. Yeah, Le yeah. Leona's like, Leona's great. You know, really cool stuff. Yeah, yeah. We we made some tweaks, made some changes to some stuff, and you know, she's she's got a new killer lineup. You know, a bunch of great guys. You know, so that's that's really cool. It just. Just timing wise with me, it really didn't work out. Yeah. You know, I just, I get in these bouts of like, yeah, I'm raring to go. And then it's like, if it starts taking too long, I'm just like, <laughs> and with the pandemic, you know, it wasn't anybody's fault, but just because of the yeah. pandemic, nothing was going on. We literally had a book gig, uh, gig booked at VAM. We were going to open for last in line. Oh, cool. And, and that was on March, March something in 2020. Yeah. And then COVID hit and. And last in line, that's the that's the Adio band that right? Andy's Minus. Andrew's in, yeah, yeah, yeah. Andrew Freeman, Andrew Freeman, oh, he's a yeah. fantastic singer, absolutely, yeah. yeah, fantastic guy too, man, absolutely. But yeah, that was, that was cool. We were gonna do that, and then that just 
fizzled because of the pandemic. Yeah, it squashed it all, man. It yeah, really it fucked squashed us. everything, dude. Oh. Everything, everything we had going. We went through. We went through three record labels with Jeff's record. Oh, really? Yeah, to get Jeff's record out, and because of the pandemic, nothing was happening. Yeah. You know, so eventually we just got to a point. We said, screw it. We're just going to do it ourselves. We know what we're doing. We've been in the business and industry in a long time. And we started our own la label. Yeah, I was going to say, know? yeah, that's what we were talking about before we uh, pushed the record button. You're starting mm -hmm. your own label with Jeff. It's amazing. Yeah, it's awesome. It's, it's me, Jeff, and his brother, Sean, um, called Tone House Records. And we're just, we're, be we're mainly focusing on Jeff and... Um, Sean's original stuff that they're doing. Mm -hmm. I got you know, the website up here too. Cool, cool, cool. Awesome. Yeah, that's it. Tone, Tone House Records. ToneHouseRecords.com. Yeah, there'll be a link DC4. in the description. Yeah, DC4 is awesome. I was just talking to Jeff about that uh, as well. Like, when are you going to do another DC4 record, bro? Um, soon. That's, that's so great. <laughs> it's going to be soon. Yeah. Uh, we've been talking about it for a while. Um, and. I'm just gonna say soon. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna give anything away. Yeah, he was like, uh, he was like, man, you know, gotta write fucking songs. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is, that's you like, know. Yeah, that's and it was like crazy because you know we were, Jeff finished his record, we finished Wanderlust, and then right after that, boom, they went right into the cycle to write the last Armored Saint record, Preacher, oh, uh, nice. Punch in the Sky. So they wound up doing all of that, and then. Right after that, we were getting ready. We were talking about doing some DC4 stuff, and then he got busy with other stuff, and then there was promo promotion stuff that they had to do. And then the Armored Saint came coming up with cool promotion stuff to do over the over the pandemic. They did an uh, acoustic version of the tune Isolation. I got to work on that with them, which was really, really fun. Um, I did recorded background vocals for the Punch in the Sky record, which was cool. You know, get, I've been a fan of that band since I'm like 13 years old, dude. That's awesome. And being able to work with those guys and just be like, I'm like, holy shit, this is really fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, it's right place, right time, you know, just because yeah. I know Jeff and we did his record. And they heard the record and they were like, wow, this is really cool. In fact, Joey from Orange Saint plays a tune on the record, plays on one of the tunes on the record. Oh, nice. What yeah, song is he on? Do you know him? Um, he is on uh, Mr. Allen. Mr. Allen. And, dude, it's like a funk thing. Wow. Wow, dude. I'll be listening Killer. to it after the podcast uh, for sure. Barnes is on it too. Barnes oh, Barry Barnes? Yeah, Barnes plays on Evil Knievel. Oh, it's high. Um, He's a hell of a bass player. Oh, hell yeah, uh, dude. Jeff played ba bass on most of the songs. Um, Joey Vera played on Mr. Allen. I played bass on Ed Astra, actually. Um, Fritz O'Hara played bass on Sleepwalk. And, who the, and Barry played on Evil Knievel. Nice. Yeah. We had That's a nice a solid little talent pool, right? Yeah, there, man. Yeah. It was, it was, and it was, we had a great time doing it, which was the best part. Yeah. You know, Je Jeff had given me a bunch of demos, and I listened to the demos, and I'm like, yo, these are actually really good, dude. You know, we, you could, technically, we could master these and you could release these. You know, the guitar tone wasn't a phenomenal because he was using some direct thing. Yeah. Right. And I was like, but the songs are really good, dude. Like, really, like, it's not what I expected. You know, I expected the shreddy guitar, sweep arpeggio, you know, thing, like the yeah. shrapnel guys from the 80s. But he handed me this record, and it's more, almost more like a Satriani record. You know, solid songwriting, you know, with parts and changes and middle eighths and the whole, and I'm like, dude, I'm like, this shit is great. He's like, really, man, thanks, thanks, thanks. I'm like, you know what? We should do this. Should make you a record. He's yeah. like, oh, I don't know, blah blah blah. This was just a hobby thing for me, and yet, and I was like, no, we gotta do this, man. We have to. And I just kept pushing him and pushing him and pushing him until finally he said yes. That's fantastic. <laughs> this, and this stuff, this stuff is really great, man. I I told him straight up when we started doing it. I'm like, dude, this might be the greatest, one of the greatest guitar records of the last 20 years. Man. Like, I'm not <laughs> kidding. Like, seriously. It's phenomenal because it's not your typical shreddy guitar record. There's songs with melodies and parts and harmonies, and he plays the you know he plays the guitar stuff like their vocal lines and absolutely incredible, you know. And it took us it took us a while. It took us like two years to get it done because he was touring and we started it in 2018. So he toured through 2018, toured through 2019 with with Saint, you know, all over the world they went, and then. The end of 2019, we finally got some time to sit down when they came off tour to really sit down, hammer it out, and finish it up. 
you know, it, it took a while, but it was it was fun. It was a good time. We had a great time doing it, man. That's so badass, man. Yeah, Jeff's fuck, just an incredible guitar player, man. Jeff's he's an incredible, incredible dude in general, dude. And he's oh, I so love that funny. Guy. He is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> just wait. Just wait, dude. Just, yeah. You hang with the guy for 30 minutes, you think you've known him for 40 years. Yeah. He's one of those guys, man. I, like I said, I was just talking to him. We're going to bring him on the podcast. So awesome. We'll have uh, hopefully a future podcast coming up soon with Mr. Duncan. Hell yes. Talking about you know the future of Armored Saint and DC4, and mm -hmm. I'm sure... His new record, Wanderlust. Yep. Yeah. So it's that'll killer. be cool, man. That'll be really cool. Now I'm trying to talk him into doing another one. <laughs> I hope he does, man. Uh, me too. More, me too. More the bet better for him. I agree, now. man. I agree. You know, he's got so much music in him, dude. So much. Yeah. It's crazy. He sends me stuff all the time, just little demos and stuff. What do you, how is this, bro? What do you think of this? Blah, 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 blah. Always killer stuff, man. Nothing he hands me is ever a dud. And I'm just like, how do you do this? <laughs> and his answer is always the same thing. The Beatles. <laughs> the Beatles. The Beatles. Yeah, man. I mean, that's that's the what was it? I I was listening to a thing where uh, Paul McCartney and uh, David Grohl are doing oh, a yeah, song dude. together. And, and why isn't why isn't it always this easy? Yeah, it is. It is always this easy. Dude, Paul's response. I watched that and literally just a tear. I was just like, because that's like a dream, dude. I'm oh, a yeah. massive Beatles guy, dude. Me too. Massive. Man. Me too. And for I've seen Paul McCartney like eight times. You know, I got I got to see Paul McCartney at Madison Square Garden, and at the end of the night, Ringo came up and did three songs. Oh, really? Yeah, dude. I was oh. like, oh man, this is so awesome. It was great, dude. That's oh, incredible. Amazing. Yeah, it was. I was, I was really fortunate to see Ringo just happened to be in town, and Paul called him, called him, and said, "Come play some songs." And that happened to be the night I went to the show. It was great. That's amazing. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, I still amazing. regret uh, not going to see Paul when he was in town, man. I mean, he's so he's like three hundred bucks yeah, for no tickets are way too expensive. But it's like when it passed, it's like I mean, I don't need that six hundred dollars. <laughs> I could have seen Paul McCartney. <laughs> it's a tough decision, man. Yeah. Do I eat this month or do I go see Paul McCartney? <laughs> right. <laughs> it's so ridiculous how no, expensive I, that is. But I totally get it. I mean, he's the he's a beetle. I, it's he's true. a legend yeah. right there. Yeah. But I did. I, I looked up some videos of him playing live too, and it was like, uh, maybe yeah. it's not you know the more recent stuff. You know, it's like it's okay, but it's like right. clearly it's he, not the same anymore. Yeah, yeah. he's dude. He's, he's what? What's he? Seventy two, seventy three. He's Something up like there, that, dude. Yeah. He's up there, but he's still doing it. Yeah, you know, he's still out there. Getting, more power to him, man. More power to him. So I really liked the. My brother got me into Wing. Uh, wings lately, yeah. yeah, wings, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fucking still killer stuff, tunes, yeah. man. It's fantastic yeah. stuff. There's some really groovy, groovy melodies going on. Oh that. yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know that that's that's Paul's thing, dude. Like totally, his his ear for melody and harmony is incredible. You know, John was more like the riff guy. This, you know, the riff guy, yeah. and Paul was all those sweet harmonies and the vocal stuff and that's all Paul dude just incredible incredible the yeah. two of them together was just fucking magic man oh yeah fucking magic oh yeah I listen to that stuff constantly man whenever I'm in you know whenever I'm in I really want to get inspired put on either the White Album or Sgt. Pepper you know and just chill and listen and by the time I'm done I got a big old grin on my face and I'm like hell yeah I'm a good boo now oh yeah <laughs> and like as I get older man the, the lyrics have evolved for me right oh absolutely like, I was just like when I was younger I didn't really understand everything they were talking about but now that I've had a lot of these like psychedelic experiences and just and life like, experience you know, in life general life experience yeah, yeah. in general and uh, you know, just it's just it's so deep what they're talking about a lot of the times, and it doesn't seem like that on the surface at first. But then when you really listen to what they're talking about, man, it's like I mean, man, think about a song like a Eleanor Rigby. Yeah, right. That song is dark as hell, dude, and you don't realize it. Yeah, you know, you uh, this this nice happy melody, Eleanor Rigby. <laughs> you know, and then died at a church, <laughs> and was buried along with her name. Wow, nobody Holy came. Shit. Yeah. It's pretty uh, dark, man. Pretty yeah. dark. You know, craziness. Yeah. It's awesome, though. It's, it's awesome. beautiful That's what I love stuff, about it, man. Yeah. yeah. And I love uh, The Fool on the Hill. That's it's one of great my favorite too. songs now. Because it's really, it's like, uh, that was something they took, they brought back from India, man. Yeah. You know, the gurus out there. Yeah. Nobody, All the Ravi Shankar stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Hell nobody yeah, wants dude. To, nobody wants to listen to what this guy has to say, you know. And... Uh, 
but the fool on the hill sees the sun going down, you know? And it's just, yeah, I never really, it clicked for me at a certain yeah. point what they were all talking about. It's always awesome stuff, when yeah. that happens too. Yeah. You'll be listening and all of a sudden it just clicks and you go, oh, oh shit. Is that what they're saying? I get it now. Yeah. yeah that That's the music thing, dude. I love, that's what, what I love about music. It yeah. means so much to so many different people. You know, everybody has their own personal experience with it, no matter what band it is. Yeah. You know, even Primus, everybody, oh, yeah. Yeah, everybody's connection to that band is different. You know, I got into them because I'm a prog guy, you know, and the stuff that Les does is just crazy. Insane. Insane. It's yeah. awesome. The moment, dude, I'll never forget the day you came to me and said, hey, we should do a Primus tune. I was like, <laughs> I said yes because I didn't think you could play it. I really Honestly, I that. swear to God, dude. I swear to God. Yeah. I was like, there's no way. And you walked in the back room with that bass, dude, and started playing. And I was like, oh, shit, now I have to learn the song. Yeah. <laughs> but when we did it, I was just like, this is so much fun. Oh, it's a blast to play, so isn't it? So much fun, And dude. I just love how hard you have to push yourself. It's not just like jamming some 4-4 four, four stuff. It's no. Like you got to know every note of the and song. we did a whole set of that shit. Yeah. Oh, my God, dude. So much effort into, into putting that together. I put that video on. It. I watch that video on YouTube every once in a while. I'll oh, pop yeah. it on and I'll watch it. I'll nice. go, you know what? We had a lot of fun doing this shit. Oh, Paulie's yeah. ear-to-ear grin the whole night, it. dude. Yeah. It was good. It was a good time. And Paulie, he... Uh, he trained with uh tim yeah. alexander he took lessons right. from tim alexander who's yeah. actually now a vegas local man yes He's he is blue man group yes he is so yeah i gotta try to weasel him on the show soon i'm gonna <laughs> that would be awesome i'm gonna get jeff to tour on and then i'll be like hey talk to fucking tim for me <laughs> bring tim on the show <laughs> another great talented uh, guy in this fucking town to Tora, dude Jeez. god yeah man of many talents to Tora. that guy dude yeah He's an he's an animal too. His tinnitus yeah. band. I mean, he does. He's, oh, yeah, he's incredible great. with Blue Man Group, and then Uber Shawl, of course. Like all the percussion stuffs, f- phenomenal. Yeah. But then when he gets up on stage and does the uh, the front man thing, it, he's just a freaking animal. When I was playing with Frankie Perez, yeah, Frankie could make it one night. Uh, he got stuck in L.A. His flight got canceled, and he got stuck. And I needed somebody to come sing. So I called Totora. <laughs> Totora and Scott Coogan came down. And, oh, Coogie uh, Monster. Yeah, we did a bunch of Zeppelin with Coogie, and then we did like Tool and Rage Against the Machine and all this other shit with Totora. It was great, dude. We had so much fun. That's amazing. It was a good night. It was a good night. Yeah, he, uh, dude, he would do this thing where he like tries to jump out and start running across the tables. <laughs> and I remember, one I remember people, this story. Yeah. <laughs> so, they, so people like hold the table so he can do it, you know, because it's like, he's not going to hold your weight, bro. You're, you're going to hurt yeah. yourself. And these guys are drinking, not paying attention. He jumped on their table and they weren't holding what? it and flipped the whole yep. thing upside down. And he just pops up <laughs> out of the crowd, keeps fucking going, climbs back on some more tables. Yeah, the guy's out of his mind. He's out of his mind. I love it. Yeah, it's so much it's fun. It's so entertaining. Oh, yeah. You know, it's great, dude. It really is. It's awesome. You know, I got to record him, too, which was really nice when we did the Stony record. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. he was playing drums yeah, on that, yeah, right? Yeah, he played drums on the Stony record. Yeah. Fucking awesome, man. Dude, incredible. Yeah, like incredible. he always plays like percussion instruments, but then when you get him behind a full kit, fuck. Yeah, dude. I just can't believe what when, he's capable of. When Stoney told me when we were doing that, when we were getting ready to do that record, I'm like, you sure Totora? Because yeah. I'm used to Totora being, you know, the monster. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know he was going to be able to just sit back and play that bluesy pocket thing. And when he started doing it, I was just like, holy shit. Like, amazing. Oh, yeah. You know, and there's this one tune on that record, uh, Deja Vu, that they did live in the room one take. Oh, really? Whole song, dude. And then we went back and we overdubbed, the, uh, what do you call it, some lead vocal and uh, guitar stuff. But Totoro's performance on that is a single take, dude. And it's just like, it's it's magical. Oh, man. Yeah. And I mean, you got Barry Barnes and Stoney Curtis, which two of the best musicians in town. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. Absolutely. That's, that record's incredible. It's, it was a fun record to make, dude. Yeah. And we, were going, we went through some shit with that, though. Desert Moon was just redone. Yeah. You know? And there were some bugs in the system, oh, and yeah. we lost some really good takes, dude. Oh, really? Yep. Jeez. There were some bugs in the system going on with that thing, dude. It was a pretty. It was pretty bad. That's we would get a hold of Abbott, and they wouldn't get back to us, and we went. It was stressful, you know. And then Stony went through some stuff during that. I, I think, if I remember correctly, I think his mom passed away while we were making that record. Oh God. Or she got sick. I can't remember what it was. I don't remember so long ago. It was back in 2013, but uh. 
but yeah, and you know, so he he wasn't in the right headspace, you know. So that will happen, and then we had to t- then we had to take some time off in order to you know him to get his head back on on straight and stuff. But other than that, but it was a good time. I mean, we we ha- we had a lot of fun making that record, you know, a lot of stressful stuff too during making that record, but it was what it was. Yeah, that was a whole stressful time there, to be totally honest. Yeah, and I, I remember I installed a bunch of like brand new Avid gear, and like, yeah. the support for it was just garbage. Terrible, terrible, terrible. They were just, we were just like, are you gonna? This, so the touchscreen on this interface just doesn't work. And they're like, yeah. I was like, cool. So when are you gonna come out with firmware to make that work? And they're like, nah. Yeah, nah. Pretty much. This is a brand new interface, man. You know what's yeah. funny? I just spent on this thing. Yeah. That, dude, that thing was not cheap. Yeah. <laughs> I remember seeing that bill. Yeah. And they're just like, nah. You know, yeah. it didn't work out for us. We're just moving on. And you had done so much work in that place, dude. You rewired Fuck. that whole thing and got it all working again. Yeah. Fucking mess, man. <clears throat> I yeah. was like living there, mixing bands at night and then living there during the day, fucking soldering everything together. Dude. That I was the same thing while I was there. Oh, yeah. It was a, fu- it was, it was a cool project when it all yeah. came uh, done, man. I especially loved the... Custom patch bay Poly D and I made that, <laughs> that was that a f- flush like you know nice yep. wooden patch bay in the um in the that purple velvet room. Yep, that shit was tight. Six months after that, it was all gone. Yeah, of course, of course it was. They had they had um who the hell was it? I think it was AJ. Yeah, I think they had AJ come in and redo the whole place. Yeah, and he just threw a fucking C twenty four in there and called it a day. He threw a C twenty four in. They yeah. got the JBL three hundred LS three hundred fives. Yeah. And yeah, it's some new preamps, and that was about it. Yeah, you know, when you and I were there, they had put in the LA six ten. Uh, obviously the whole pro the Pro Tools HD rig. Yeah, you know that you put together. Um, I think that was it though. Yeah, and then after that, all of that, the Pro Tools rig stayed. They put a C24 in there instead of the controls that they had, yeah. which were better than the C control 24. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, all right, this is what you guys are going to do. Whatever. It was what I was guy, gone by then already. The, yeah, it's I what the guy was it. comfortable with, you know. Yeah. What are you going to do? And they ripped out all the fucking cool stuff I put up in the ceiling, the, all the, uh, this triple display setup yeah. that I had with the yep. touchscreen interface. Uh-huh. I have it here It was now. awesome. It was great. Yeah. Dude, I made five records in that room, dude. Oh, it yeah. was awesome. It was a lot of fun. It's awesome. But yeah, fuck. Oh man, what was that? The Foundry record that I did in that room afterwards. Oh yeah, man. that's right. You did the Foundry record. I, well, I f- I came in at, after the fact. Was that with bowls or without bowls? No, that was it. Wasn't Kelly Keeling? Singing. It was right? Kelly Keeling yeah. singing. Yeah, so you was, got to deal with him too. I got to deal with him. Everyone was like, <laughs> "Fuck this guy," and walk in, and I and they were like, "Can you come in and like deal with Kelly?" And I was like, "Yeah, whatever, man." And I went in and. Dealt with his his. Did you insanity? worked on the Red Zone Rider record too? Didn't you? Yeah, that was amazing. That's the record I walked out on. Was it? Yes. Oh man, because because of Kelly. Oh yeah, dude, Kelly's a lot to deal with. Dude, when we did that record, okay. So one of my biggest influences on guitar, Vinny Moore on guitar. Yeah. Coogan on drums, Kelly playing bass, vocals, and keyboards. Vinny Moore. Vinny Moore. I was, I was talking Red Zone Rider record. I've been. Yep. I can't. Re- I can never remember Vinny's name or the yep. name of the guitar player yeah. anymore. Anymore, his tone and like what he does with his guitar is Insane. just beautiful, man. Yeah. It's beautiful. It, like it's, it's so clean. You can hear every single note just perfectly, but it's got this nice distorted tone to yeah, it. Yeah, he doesn't like, over distort. He plays yeah. everything under gain, so it's almost it's. It's like a clean tone almost, but you know the gain isn't all really harsh and distorted. It's great. It's great. He's always been like that, killer, yeah. super fluid. So what we had to do in order to finish that record, in order to make it work, was so we got all the drums recorded, and then after that, because of everything that was going on, it got, it got kind of dramatic in there. I literally had to bring in my studio rig from home and put it upstairs. Oh really? Yeah. And I took the, that bathroom that was up in that room, packing blankets, sound treatment, put a Marshall cabinet so Benny could plug his head in, mic'd it all up, blah, 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 blah. And he recorded all his guitars up there on his own. Wow. While I was downstairs dealing with Kelly and the bass and everything else. <laughs> we brought in this awesome Fender Precision, American Precision bass for him to play. Yeah. Because his bass was kind of beat up. He had this old Hondo fretless. And it just wasn't. Wasn't sounding right. 
So he went to go give him the precision. He's like, no, I'm not playing this. <laughs> it was that kind of difficult stuff. And I was just God. like. Remember like how a classic thin, bass tone. Yeah. Like, you remember, remember how thin the control room glass was? Yeah. Dude, he was in the booth one day. Me and Varney were in the room talking, and he started punching the glass because he couldn't hear us because Varney turned his headphones off because he didn't want to hear what we were talking about. Jeez. I had to walk in the room like, Kelly, please don't do that. Yeah. Two times, Kelly, please don't do that. Fucking Third time, drama. please don't do that. Yeah. Fourth time, I was like, dude, you do that again, I'm going to do it to your head. Yeah. <laughs> What are you doing? Punching glass in the what freaking the fuck, studio, dude? man. You know, and eventually I just had to pull Varney aside and I was like, dude, I can't do this. I don't have the patience. I just don't. Yeah. I'm really sorry. And then I called, I called up Michael Lardy. I said, Michael, can you do me a favor and can you come in and can you finish tracking this? That's all I need you to do. I'll come back and mix it, blah, 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 the whole deal. I just need somebody to track this. Now, you know how Michael is. Michael's like yeah. the nicest guy ever, dude. Yeah. He lasted like 15 minutes, and he was like, I'm out of here. I can't do this. <laughs> 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 Kelly was going through some shit at the time. I mean, Kelly's yeah. a nice guy. Yeah. I mean, it's not, we're making him sound like a nightmare. He's really not a nightmare, but he, he's particular in what he wants. And, yeah. You know, things got to be a certain way and so on and so on. I get it. You know, he's an artiste. It's more know? like, uh, it's like when you're doing monitors for a live band. It's not how good your monitors are. It's the fact that I care, bro. Yes. I'm here for you. I'm not going to just like f put up your vocal and then fuck you off, you know, like, oh, well, it doesn't matter. It's like, nah, man, whatever you need, you need me to do, I'm going to do it for you. Two biggest losses in the yeah. history of that place. Yeah. You, Danny G. Oh, I know. I know, man. Two biggest losses in that place, man. Well. It's never been the same. That's how it goes, though, you know? There's a... There's a era that ha kind of happens man and uh and, and we were all sad when you left man yeah we almost cried <laughs> oh you know i had uh <laughs> i got offered a bunch of money to go do all no. this fucking big stuff hell and yeah took it and they you know they weren't thrilled about it so you know it was uh the, the way the cookie crumbled man i'm glad it worked out the way it did it, it bummed me out at first when uh when i lost that gig but uh I'd probably still be over there f fixing stuff every day and helping them still, yeah. you know, just because I, I cared and I liked the place, you know? Yeah. So it's I like, mean, it was nice to have that clean cut, even though it sucked for me to just go and do no, yeah. this other stuff. And I've grown so much. Like, like I didn't know shit when I was back there. Like I knew how to, <laughs> I knew how to mix a band, you know, like I was good at that part. Uh, but like all my technical skills were just, just so low level compared to what they are now and i got oh, yeah. thrown i i thought i knew what the fuck i was doing and then i got thrown at these huge events and like you know we're constantly flying line array and dealing with state-of-the-art technology and like all these just everything's just so top of the line yeah, yeah. i was like i was working for creative technologies right oh, so it's very like cool. uh just fuck man I, I i was like yeah i got this and i went in and then like th for the first six months it was like every day i just have google on my phone and i'm like reading manuals as i'm yep. programming things going how the fuck does all this work and like i had to just pick my game up so heavy and now it's like dealing with the big minus viennas and all that yeah. good stuff oh dude we we're using yamaha cl5 nice and uh digicos and Hell like, yeah. like fucking top end stuff yeah, yeah. man and uh and then flying L acoustic line arrays and nice. running you know free speak and read yeah. systems and axiant fucking wireless systems and everything's got to be networked everything's got you know yep. so you can just walk around with your laptop and program everything from your laptop yeah and, uh, I had to read a book like this thick when I started on networking. Just just networking. Because uh, uh, it was like, I went into some gigs. and the, How do Nats work? Yeah. <laughs> it, it was fucking crazy, man. You know? It was just like, start your education all over again. Yeah, dude. But uh, I happens. dug in hard, man, and I, I got awesome. through it. And, and now, like... Now I'm so much better as an engineer. It's fantastic. That's I'm so awesome, glad man. I was able to go through all that. Well, you, you know? always had the good ear, which was awesome. Yeah. I was and that's the biggest part of the, the whole thing, yeah. dude, is having the ear. You know, you always had a good ear. I, I'll tell you, man, it, it literally, I mean, this is not a slag on Brian because Brian yeah. knows what he's doing too. Yeah. But, you know, when you had left initially, I was just like, oh, man, this sucks. You always gave us great monitor mixes. You took the time and you made sure that we were comfortable all the time, dude. Everybody. Not a, nobody ever said an ill word about Jason Froberg, dude. Thank ever. You. Ever. Yeah. You know? 
And it w- I was always just like, you know what? When Jason's here, I'm not, I don't have to worry. I know I'm going to be able to hear myself. I know the band is going to sound great out front of house. You know, as soon as you left, I started taking the wireless and walking out front during sound check <laughs> and making sure everything was cool, you know. Yeah. And again, not to slag on anybody that's over there now, because all those guys are cool. You know, they're good. Yeah. You know, but we were so used to getting the Froberg treatment. Well, I love everybody, great. man. And that's, it awesome. that's It's a big part of its personality, too. No, like absolutely. It's, it's one thing to be able to turn the knobs, but it's another thing to be put people at ease. And, like, monitors are everything, man. You know, got to walk out there and make sure, like, you're comfortable. And one of my, one of the lines I always like to use, man, is you go, how's, how's the monitor? And we go, it's pretty good. And I go, fuck, pretty good, man. Yeah. I want it to be the best monitors you ever had. Exactly. You, you know? said that to me. You said yeah. that to me the first time, and I was just yeah. like, "Oh, okay. Uh, give me a little bit of this and a little bit of this." And yeah, you nailed it, and there it was. The difference in the performance I'm going to get out of the band when I'm doing my mix at front of house, plus like, they're not going to fucking treat me like shit all night, exactly. you know, because it's like they can turn into a fight real fast. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And uh, and but yeah, it's like and. We're here to have fun. Isn't it called playing a show, yes. right? We're supposed to be playing around. So it's like, check your fucking ego and like, let's just, let's have a good time. Let's make sure everybody has a good yeah. time. And everybody always did, dude. Yeah. We always had a great time in that place. Always. Never had a complaint, man. Never had a complaint. The very first time we played there, it was feel good still. Yeah. And um, who was the original guy? Chuck, right? Was that his name? Chuck? Chad? Jeff? It was Vince Neil sound guy. Can't remember. Can't remember what his name was. I don't know. I know his touring guy's Josh Pizzotto. Now it is. Yeah. yeah. Then it was somebody else, and he was the front of house guy there at the time, and did monitors from the, from there and the whole deal, and it just it wasn't comfortable. Yeah. You know. Then when you walked in the door, you know we were we were expecting you know the same kind of treatment, and then you were like, "Hey guys, <laughs> we're like, what the fuck is this? This is awesome." <laughs> yeah. All right. It's okay, like, I can do this. This is cool. They're always so crabby. Like this, the classic sound guy attitude is like, I'm better than this. And oh, what the fuck am I doing at this place? You know, don't you know who I am? And they're like, oh, what the hell, man? This I don't is care who you are. Yeah, nobody cares. <laughs> you're a monitor guy, dude. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're, you're a fucking technician, man. You're just, a nobody. I'm a nobody. Yeah. Let's just have a good show. Have Please. fun. Yes. I do it because I love it. And yes. It's, this is, you know, the best job in the world. Me and my brother yes. always say, my brother also an audio mm-hmm. engineer when we're working together, which is not enough. We need to work together <laughs> yeah. more, but it always seems to not work. I'm a, I'm kind of a whore for money. Yeah. No. So I, uh, I'm always just out. I'm hustling. Jewish. Yeah. Jason. <laughs> <laughs> I have this disease. Uh, I understand it. <laughs> so, you know, it's like, I, I wish I was doing more gigs with my brother, but at the same time, I like those big day rates. But, uh, friggin', uh, no, when we're working together, it's, uh, it's always fantastic. And we just go, man, like, if I could figure out something cooler to be doing with my life, I'd be doing And that. still make money. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's like, this has got to be the best thing going, man, you know? Like, we were, when, when shit was popping back off, I was over there at Area 15 with him, mm-hmm. putting raves on and doing That's all awesome. kinds of fun shows. And it's just like, we're just playing with big toys, man. Making, I used to do a bunch of promotion stuff, stuff like that when I lived in Texas. Yeah? Yeah. Um, we, used to, we used to throw little underground parties and raves in the goth scene and do all that crazy stuff. All the time, dude. There's yeah. lots of fire dancers and the whole deal. I love fire dancers. Me too. It's That's awesome, such a cool dude. thing, man. Absolutely. Yeah. We love it. It's cool. I got to go to, uh, um, in Vegas, you know, we have like talent parties or it's like mm-hmm. um, industry parties, Industry right? parties, yeah. Where it's like all the- Monday's stuff. dark and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or like, well, um, the one I'm referring to actually is like a, it's like a private- kind of thing, like all these Cirque performers are showing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know the one you're talking about. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so, uh, and like everybody there's just this talent, talented person, you know, and they have all this stuff set up for people to just get drunk and then all the fire dancers are just like yep. doing their thing. They're not getting paid to be there to do no, it. No, they're so doing they're it because like they love it, yeah. Doing experimental stuff and there's a stage with instruments and people are it's jamming awesome. and it's just like the talent pool of, of Las Vegas partying together and just having fun. It's such a cool vibe to be involved Absolutely. with, man. And I love that at the parties, man. I got to invite more of my fire dancer friends to my parties. <laughs> I got to have parties at places where we can have fire dancers. I got a huge backyard, dude. Anytime you want. Oh, really? Yeah. Don't fucking tempt me. I'll no. bring a PA to your house. <laughs> Go ahead. My neighbors don't complain. Yeah. Dude, we had a bi- we have bands uh, in my backyard all the time. Oh, really? We do. Oh, yeah. man. Dude, we full- might have to throw some parties. I got a full eight-piece pearl. Whole really? deal. Yeah, dude. 
Ah, oh, shit. We're I out there on 4th of July. Here. Yeah. 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 Oh, Whenever you want, dude. I'm totally down. That sounds like fun. We had Corey Sorrenti's new band come down and play. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, cool. I'm trying to think of their name. I can't think of, I can't think of the name of it. It's got Andy playing guitar from who used dinner to be in Dinner Music. Dinner Music, Andy? Yeah. Oh, he's Corey's on drum. Corey's on bass. Um, the ki- the guy who does the... God, why am I forgetting everybody's name name today? That's how it goes. The guy who sings in uh, Dio Rising. Dio um, Rising. I'm totally drawing a blank. I'm I'll look ter- up, I'll look up Dio Rising and find I'm it for you. Terrible. I feel so bad. <laughs> and then uh, Chris, who was playing guitar and smashing Alice for a while on the other guitar. Okay, yeah. And then Shannon is the drummer. Shannon used to be the drummer for Avenger... Well, still is. The drummer for Avenger of Blood. What are they called? Metal, metal something. Oh my God! I'm totally drawing a blank now. It's killing me. Dave Fisher. Dave Fisher. Thank yeah. you, David Fisher. Yes. And they're killer, dude. Yeah. They do everything from Dio and Maiden to Kill Switch and as I, it's awesome. They're great. They're killer. Yeah, that kind of shit's fun. They came for Fourth of July. Yeah. And they got me instruments, and I was like, "Go ahead." They played for like two hours. That's it was awesome. Fantastic. Yeah. And my neighbors don't complain. Yeah, I have My a, neighbors are great. I have a full system. We set up so we threw my dad a birthday party, he turned 70. And so I took some PA and some lights over to his pool. Nice. And set up a whole system. And we had it just bumping and lights and lasers flashing and shit. And it was That's just, awesome. it was a blast. And I was like, this is so much fun, man, just to have this going for ourselves. And I was like, I should set up my whole PA one of these nights and <laughs> get all my friends' bands out, and we'll just set up a fucking whole, like, festival just for oh, us. Oh, yeah. And it'll just be friends and family, and yeah. That's what we used to do when we were kids. What My very, my, well, my, technically my second band. My first band, I got signed, so my first real band. Um... We used to do house parties all the time. There was a club that closed down on Long Island, and we bought their PA system. Okay. It was two double 500-watt, no, 1,500-watt JBL bass bins, um, full, set of mid, full set of mid-tower speakers, and double tweeters on top, old Ramsa 24-channel console. Um, Ramsa? Ramsa. <laughs> old Ramsa. 24 channel console. Uh, uh, but yeah, we dude, and eight monitors. We bought this whole system from this club. We paid like 1500 bucks for it. Oh, damn. Because they, they were just going to throw it out. Yeah. We're like, no, 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 don't throw it out. We'll buy it. And we didn't have any place to put it, so we had to buy a storage unit. And put <laughs> <it in> store. <laughs> dude, we're like 16-year-old kids. We had to go yeah. buy a storage unit. It was crazy. But we used to throw these, a, a couple buddies of ours used to throw these massive house parties. So we would bring this, this monster PA system. Like this massive thing <laughs> with the double eighteens and the oh. mid towers and, and the horns, and just rock it, dude. We do them. We do them like uh, twice a month. That's so cool. It was awesome. It was so cool, man. Yeah, that sounds like fun, man. <clears throat> it was. It was a good time. A really good time. It was great. Yeah, we I miss those days. We used to have uh, similar things growing up, man. Where we'd put on like metal shows, and then we there's like old dirt lots. Hell yeah. Just fucking throw a stage up out there and uh, bring kegs of beer and yep. smash a PA up and everyone's just moshing. Generator. Picking up dirt. <laughs> Get yeah. the Kia going. Rock and roll, baby. Out in the middle of nowhere, you know? Yeah. And you're like driving an hour down a dirt road and it's just like, well, I guess this is where the show is. Long before Burning Man existed. Yeah. <laughs> God, I want to do that super bad, man. Burning Man. You've never done it? it? I haven't done it yet. And I've I done really it twice. I really want to go. Yeah? Yeah. I'm not. It's uh, not my gig anymore. Yeah. I can't. I'm, I hate to say it this way, but I'm too old. I can't handle it anymore. I can't. Dude, I barely drink anymore, man. Yeah. It's like I'm up some wine on the holidays. If I drink the way I used to drink, yeah. I'm devastated the next day. Too. I can't. I, bet. I hit 40 and Shit it was just like, poison. no more alcohol, bro. No more. I'm done. You know? uh, I just hit 10 years, man. 10 years That's off awesome. the booze. Hell yeah. Congratulations, yeah, No booze, dude. no cigarettes, no, uh, no fun stuff up the nose, you know? That, nice. No cocaine Good for you. all that shit, man. Hell yeah. I quit when I was way young. Still smoking weed? I quit smoking weed, too. Really? Yeah. I fucking, wow. Uh, it just happened during the pandemic. I was... Uh, honestly, I, I, I did a huge dose of psychedelic mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was listening to Terrence McKinnon talk about, you know, mushrooms one day. Uh-huh. And, and he goes, if you aren't taking five grams or more, then you're wasting your time. He goes, if you want to really experience the mushrooms, he goes, you got to take five grams and just 
chill in a dark room by yourself with the mushrooms. Wow. And I was like, that sounds crazy. I'm game. I got nothing else going on. It's a pandemic. <laughs> and so I did it. And like, and I wasn't initially in a dark room. I had some fun lights going. Like, right. You know, I, and, uh, and then like the fucking five grams of mushroom starts kicking into my system. And, uh, and I was like, oh. And I just turned everything off and just took my water and sat in Along darkness. With your thoughts. Yeah. And, um, and I just couldn't be more content with everything. I had a joint with me. And I was like, why the fuck am I doing this? This is wow. this is pointless. And uh, and I didn't really smoked the rest of the night when I was tri- I was just like everything was just so perfect. And then the next day I got up and it was like I went to go smoke some weed and I was like, what the fuck am I doing? And I just and wow. it just it just dis- dissipated from my existence, right. man. Like I was just like I didn't want it anymore. I I was just like, why do I need any? I don't got to add anything to this. Everything's so great already. <laughs> Fucking mushrooms, man. Nice, I love dude. That. Yeah. Nice. And I've been saying, so I, I quit last September. And so wow. I'm actually so a, year, a year, a year yeah. off, no, the, just off, year. The, off the marijuana. So a year off, I'm, I'm like, Switched to vegetarianism and wow, yeah, fucking psychedelics. I haven't and done all that, that yet. Stuff. I'm on the no carb thing right now. No carbs, great. For yeah, you. I had a heart attack two years ago. Fuck, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yep, yep. I mean, misdiagnosed it my first time. Really? Yeah. They Man. they literally told me I was healthy as an ox. <laughs> You're fine. Go home. It's like all right. Spent three days in the hospital. They did all kinds of tests. You know, the tube up through the leg and into the heart and the blah 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 and the whole deal. Like, no, you're fine. Okay. So I go home, and over the course of the next year, I can't lay down because I feel like I'm drowning all the time. Bro. My, lung, my lungs are filling with fluid. Or I can't sleep because of it. you know. And finally, I got to a point where I was sitting with Brandy one night, and I'm like, listen, I need to go to the hospital. I go to the hospital. They pick me in. My, bl- my blood pressure's through the roof. Like, I should be dead blood pressure. Jeez. My blood sugar was up in the 400s. Things were just crazy wrong, crazy, crazy wrong. I had put on like another 20 pounds, you know. I was already like 250, you know. And then, um, yeah, so then the same doctor, same doctor from the first time, does this whole thing, go through all the tests again. He goes, oh, yeah, you had a heart attack about a year ago. And I just looked at him. I said, what? I said, do you not remember sending me home a year ago and telling me I was fine? So I kept smoking. I kept doing everything, everything I was doing, Jeez. eating shitty and blah, 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 drinking and doing the whole deal. And after that, came home, quit smoking cold turkey. I haven't had a cigarette in three years. Badass. Um, so it was, th- oh, it was actually three years ago. I keep forgetting it's 21. God, so it was three years ago. <laughs> um, I really don't drink anymore. Once in a blue moon, you know, the glass of wine. Maybe a little. That's actually good for your heart, man. Yeah, maybe a little. Maybe once once in a blue moon, like a little Jack on the Rocks. But other than that, nothing really. I'm on the low carb thing. I lost sixty pounds. Congratulations! Yeah, thank you. That's hard um, to do, man. Wasn't easy. I'm Italian. <laughs> <laughs> Want to eat pasta all the time? I put uh, I put sugar in my sauce. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. But yeah, I'm a, a, my diabetes was super out of control, but now everything's fine. We just, in fact, this morning we got the new blood test work back. We got the new blood work back and yeah. everything looks fine. Fucking I'm a, back man. to normal. I feel great. I'm sleeping again. That's awesome. You know, my psoriasis is That's chilling. everything. Man. So I'm getting new ink, of course, and I'm going crazy. Oh yeah, what you got like, going on there? I got, a, I got a whole thing going on here. Buddy, my, my buddy Steve does this stuff. Cool. So he's, he's like a cartoonist. Yeah, he's like a cartoonist. Uh, amazing artist. Um, you can find him. Uh, um, hold on, let me find his Instagram real quick. I'll give. I'll give yeah. We'll pimp a little Steve right now. Yeah, he's I'll appoint. His, uh, he's appointment yeah. only, but he's absolutely ma- amazing. Um, I'll go to Instagram right here and let me know what it is, and I'll put it on the screen for him. He goes by Steve Thrasher. Steve Thrasher. Yeah. Followed by Jason Gosling. I think I got the right one. I'll give him a yep. follow as well. Yeah, amazing, amazing. And we'll put him on the screen. Amazing artwork. Yeah, I mean, he does the, he does all this stuff. stuff with the sneakers, which is really cool. And then he he that's all all hand drawn. You know, he's he's amazing. Oh, cool! Look at yeah. that. Yeah, he's incredible. Metallica dude. sneakers. Yeah. and he's a metalhead. He's a what? He's a metalhead. Oh, metalhead. Metalhead. Nice. Look at this. This is really pretty. 
They yeah. Came out cool. He does amazing stuff, man. I love tattoos, man. Me too. I was just looking at my uh, my back today when I was setting up some cameras, and I was like, fuck, I need to go I need see my boy Ray and get another piece put on there. <laughs> we were on our way to a full back piece, and we got like half my back done. And uh, and then, the, you know, the pandemic shut it down, and I haven't hopped on a plane to fly up to Oregon to get any more work done. Right. So, oh, I like this. This is cool. Yep. Oh, that's really That's cool. one of my favorite pieces he did. And that's what, uh, that piece kind of inspired me for what I was going for with this. Yeah. So if you look at it, I mean, it's not shaded or anything, but you can see it's got all the tentacles. And so there's this, since I was a kid, I'm really into like um, Crowley and Lovecraft and all that stuff. So things like Cthulhu really excite me and all that stuff. I love that shit, dude. I love it. That's it's awesome. just dark and sinister and it's really cool. So I had this whole idea to do this like Cthulhu. Like he's only got the basic outline up here for this. Uh -huh. So it's basically a Cthulhu skull with the tentacles and it's controlling all these females who are beating the hell out of this dude who did something really stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it was a cool idea that I had and I had it drawn way different. Way different. Yeah. And then he, he looked at the artwork and then he goes, do you mind if I rework this? I was like, no, whatever you want to do, because I know you're amazing. Two days later, he sends me back to this. And I was like, oh, the, the hell with my Photoshop thing. We're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, and, man. And, but what wound up happening was I went in to do it. So my psoriasis cleared up. I went in to do it. And then um, about two months ago, about two, three weeks after I got it, the, this part of it done, I started having this, I'm having this problem with my skin where it feels like I have constant pins and needles. Oh, that's sucks. They think it's some neuropathy thing. So. Yeah. You try so, acupuncture or anything like that? Uh, that? Not yet. That's next on the list. Yeah. Um, so we're dealing with that right now. And as soon as that's taken care of, first thing I'm doing is I'm going to get this thing finished. Yeah. <laughs> and it's all black and gray except their eyes. The eyes are going to be red. Oh, cool. So, That'll yeah. pop really yeah. nicely. I like so that. Black cool. and gray is so good. Yeah, yeah, I'm a black and gray guy. I'm not really a color tattoo it, tattoo kind of guy. It's not my thing. Black and gray. I just love the way black and gray looks. It does look really professional and like classic. And yeah. oh wow, yeah, he's got some good work here, man. Yeah, like, he's amazing, man. Some of this. Uh, there's a bunch of we scrolled past sneakers, but uh, then all of a sudden here comes a bunch of ink. Yeah, he's he's absolutely amazing, dude. So yeah, he does some great portrait work. There's a bunch of big sleeves in here, too. Oh, yeah, faces are so hard, man. And he's amazing at them, dude. Yeah, you either nail that or you ruin yep. it. Yep. There's no, uh, it's an okay face. <laughs> you got to get the proportion right to the way it sits yeah. on the arm properly. So when somebody's, oh, yeah. you know. And tigers, tigers are super hard, man. Yeah. Like, that's one he's of killer, dude. That are just he's absolutely amazing. Really difficult to make work. Yeah, look at all these. Yeah. Hanneman from Slayer is oh, Lombardo, nice. Kerry King. That's awesome. I friggin' love Slayer. Where's Tom or I at? Oh, uh, is that there Tom he is, right, right there. there. Yeah. yeah, there's Tom. I was thinking the same thing. Where's the Tom one? I know it's there. Oh, look at the Disney color portrait uh -huh. art. Yeah, that's dope, man. He's amazing, man. Absolutely incredible. That's incredible so artist. Cool. I won't go to anybody else. Yeah, well, you know, once you find people you trust, I got three people that I like to have tattoo me, man. And two of them I grew up with. Or you, they're good friends of mine. The other guy that I used to use moved out of town. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. Mark. Dark Mark. Dark Mark. Yeah. Oh, Dark he did this one. Yeah. No, Dark Mark did a ton of ink mm -hmm. on everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you remember Ray Eversall. He's a guitar player and a tattoo yes, artist. Yes, I do remember So Ray he's Eversall. doing a big piece on nice. my back. He did a couple pieces on my chest, but he lives in Oregon. Oh. So, but it's cool because, um, you know, uh, regardless of the bullshit that's going on there with the people, like, Oregon's beautiful. Yeah. And so I like to fly up there in, like, August. Oh, yeah. It's, and so that's it's the like, best time to be there, dude. It's killing me Absolutely. down here. It's 120, and then I go up to Oregon, and it's just beautiful outside. and we Mid-70s, you know. gorgeous blue skies. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Uh, dude, I love the Pacific Northwest. It's, it's beautiful up there. It is, it man. Is. It really is. So yeah. I lived in Kelowna, B.C. for a little while. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. And... Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous up there, dude. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, Canada's you know? great, man. Yeah, it's cool. I love Canada. I man. dug it. And they're you know, they're uh, stereotypically nice to you. Yes. I couldn't believe it when I went up there the first time. Like, 
uh, it's like when you're on a TV show or something. You totally. Like, there's no way you're this Warden actually Warden this June nice. kind of shit, yeah. Yeah. There's no way you're this nice of a person. Yeah. And they just, everybody was just so pleasant to be around. Yeah. Man. And coming from America where everyone's so trapped in their own bullshit, thinking they're the center ego. of the universe. Yeah. And like just fucking rude as hell to everybody around them, expecting the world to just, you know, uh, just snap to their, yeah. their, their Every Bend desire. to their will. Yeah. Yeah. And like you go up there and everyone's just like, what can I do for you? How you doing today, man? Hope you're having a swell time. It's great. And it's like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. I lived up there for like six months, man. Yeah. It was cool. Oh, it yeah. It was cool. And beautiful as well. Yeah, yes. Also. Absolutely beautiful. beautiful. Up there. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. It was, it was, sometimes I say to myself, I never should have left. Yeah. I wouldn't mind hanging out up there, man. Freaking, it was cool. Canada's a fantastic place to exist. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, it really was. Really likes it. I talked to you know, I'd be like Ubering around and stuff, and just mm-hmm. be like, so how's, how is it up here, anyways? You know, how's your socialized medicine medicine system, and how's uh, how's the taxes? You mind paying all those taxes? And everyone's like, it's fucking great, man. I don't got a problem with it. Exactly. Yeah. Look, look at all the stuff they get. Yeah. So it works out fucking good for them, man. You know. But, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it was cool, man. It was it was great. It was a lot of fun. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. Well, you know what? <laughs> like I was saying, go about that an time hour, again, right? Find yeah. a nice lull in it. Hell yeah! And call it, man. We'll get you out of here right right around an hour, man. It's been it's a good perfect. time, man. Yeah, it's fun, right? It goes by yeah. fast, and it's just it's just shooting the shit with friends. It's, I just it's love, awesome, man. It's such a and it's such a great premise, you know. Yeah. And it's just shooting the shit. It That's is. It. It's great. There's nothing to it. You know? There's nothing to it, man. There he goes, what's your, uh, what's your Especially podcast about? Especially when you haven't about? talked to somebody in almost three years. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing I like about it the most, man. It's really helped me like uh, realize we don't have too many like legitimate conversations in our day-to-day lives. It's you true. Know? It's, it's always like this passing thing. We see people at the club. We see people at work. Yep. Quick little blurb on, and when on you're, social media. You're it's around not, the loud music. and yeah. you, you can't have a conversation. Yeah. You can't. You and, know? And so it's been a great opportunity to like really meet people for the first yeah, time. Yeah, absolutely. Really get to know who these people are that are around me. And everybody's got something interesting to say, you know. Of everybody's course. Everybody's got a, a beautiful story, man. Like, That's what makes humans awesome, dude. Yeah. That's everybody's fantastic. life is an, and experiences are different. And when you see things from, you know, see things from their perspective, especially things you can relate to, you know, you see it from their perspective and it's just like, wow. Well, yeah. You know, I studied sociology in college, man. So it was like. That's like a whole big thing for me. Psychology and sociology. I'm really into that whole human psyche thing, dude. Yeah. Me Having too, conversations yeah. with people is. Everyone's the got best. their own like filter they view the world with, man. Yep. Everybody's yeah. got their own rose colored glasses. Yeah. <laughs> or shit colored glasses. Shit colored glasses. Yeah. I was like, I was hanging out with a guy last night. And, uh, you know, he's like, I was like, how you doing, bud? You know, like, I'm just, I'm a fucking crazy person now. So I'm just like, isn't life fucking great? And everyone's like, what, that? what are you on right now? And I'm like, nothing. <laughs> nothing. I'm drinking water. <laughs> and I'm like, this guy's fucking crazy. And it's just like, well, I'm just trying to make it, you know, suck as little as possible. And I was like, you know, that's all just perspective in your head, that's bud. That's all it is, dude. You're just, you're viewing the world wrong, man. You yep. know, or however you want to view it. I don't want to say it's wrong, but it's like, you don't have to suffer so much. Jason, it's yeah. wrong. It's wrong. It's yeah. Wrong. yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's an illusion, man. I Life know. is what you make it, dude. Yeah. It's and plain and simple. Yeah. You know, if you choose to be miserable, you're going to be miserable. If you choose to be happy, you're going to be happy. Yeah. You get what you... You get from the universe what you put into the universe. That's yeah. the way it works. You know? End of story. Yeah. I mean, the, we're, we're just conduits for the energy, bro. Yeah. That's all to, we are. To bring it back to the uh, the Beatles, right? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Uh, you know? In the end, the love you, uh, yeah, yeah, the love yeah. you take <laughs> is the love you make, right? Yes. That's it. Fucking so uh, just put love out in the universe as much as you can. All you need is love. It's free, man. You know, yep. you just fucking just exude love to everything around you. 100%. I've been doing it now for uh, f- about five months or so. And uh, it's amazing had, the difference that it makes. Yeah, I had an amazing experience on my birthday. I took way too much acid. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and I just like, you know, I just turned into this giant ball of love. And I was just like, everything's just fucking love, man. That's I was me like, when I'm drunk. Yeah, it's like there's just, 
anything that you think that it's just like psychological drama you're just making it up you know like everything's just fucking made out of pure love yeah and so I just start t- try to take that into my daily life and I go around and I'm just like fucking I love you man yeah I love everything and uh and you know people some even people that are are they they don't take kindly to that they got nothing to say to no, it no of course not they're trying to they try to smash some negativity and when you go I fucking love you so much and they're like Okay, fine. <laughs> yeah, you just, know, and it's just like it makes life so good. You just go around loving everything so much. Did yeah. you ever hear the story of my birthday at the Sand Dollar with Zito and, St- and Stony? Uh huh. Oh my god, dude, I got so hammered. Yeah. And when I drink, I'm like Mister. I love the world. <laughs> so it's a beautiful world. I don't remember anything about this night. Nothing. I drank so much. Everybody, dude, there's like 60 people there all came down to hang out because I said I was going to be there. And Zito was playing. Stoney was coming and jamming with them. So it was, you know, Paulie, Barry, Stoney, the, the, the crew, you know. Supposedly, like every four songs, I would work my way up on stage and yell at everybody in the sand dollar that they weren't giving Zito enough love. <laughs> <laughs> uh, supposedly, I pushed Stoney away from his microphone. Uh, Stoney was trying to stop me, you know, so Zito could play. And I pushed Stoney out of the way. And I told him, like, no, man, hold on. I got to tell everybody something. And I just went into this diatribe about how much I love Zito and blah, blah, blah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Halfway through that night, Coogan was hanging out with me. So I'm hanging with Scotty Coogan and I'm like sitting on the chair backwards and like leaning on the chair, you know, just on the back legs. Yeah. He's like, you need to stop that, dude. You're going to hurt yourself. Yeah. I was like, no, nah, I'll be fine, dude. Two minutes later, boom, face first through a glass table. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I would face first through oh. a table. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was cruel. crazy. <laughs> I have I have pictures. I have I had this cut on my face with like where, where it cut. Me. Oh, dude. The, these are the stories. Yeah. These are the stories. But that's living, man. It was great. Yeah. It was great. You know? Yeah, you could. I'm, I, dude, I miss the whole crew, dude. Yeah. That whole crew that we had, you know, basically the Count 77 crew, you, me, when we were all chilling and all hanging out and all working together. It was great, dude. It was awesome. It was fun, man. It was fun. It was a good it time. It was. It was a good time. Always. And then it all fell apart. It always does. The only, uh, the only constant in life is change, man. I know. I've had several of those in my life, man. You know, like ever since I moved to Vegas, just just Vegas in general, like I had the House of Blues crew. Right. And then there was the Canyon Club days and then Beauty Bar was fantastic and famped. And it was just like these circles Such of a shame people and these beauty. Pla- I know. Total that was Such one of the shame. best places, man. Yeah. It was great. And uh I was so bummed. I was down there watching Young the Giant and uh and I was feeling like dancing. Uh, you know, because uh, you're at a concert, you might as well stimulate. And uh, they ended, they ended, and I was just like, it's just fucking getting going. And I started just looking for a dance club, and fucking beauty bar was closed. Ugh. And I was just so bummed, man. Like I, I that would have just saved my fucking life no, yeah. down there, man. Uh, yeah, that but, really uh, sucks, man. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was such a staple of downtown. It totally it was, was. Such a such cool vibes. We had the vibe, so the people, many. everything about that place yeah. was cool, man. I loved that place. That place was awesome. I saw so many great shows there. Yeah. So many great shows. And that outside stage was the coolest, man. Oh yeah. It In was an alley. Yeah, it was great. You know, just everything everything about that place without it being punk rock was punk rock. Yeah. Everything about that place, dude. Yeah, it was awesome. It was super open to the whole like yeah. LGBTQ community Absolutely. before that was like popular and yep. like shoved down everybody's throats. It was just yeah. like here's a safe place for you to fucking come be yourself, man, and no one's gonna give you a hard time. I was w- w- maybe start going there. Yeah, you know, I had a I used to hang out with a whole used to hang out with a whole bunch a bunch of people from the LGBTQ trans friends the whole deal. Yeah, used to hang out with them all the time. They're like, oh, we're going to the beauty bar. I was like, what's the beauty bar? Like, yeah. you never been there? You gotta come. Come on. Oh, yeah. Go down and hang out. And I was like hooked. I was like, oh, this place is great. And Tony James DJing all the time. Hell yeah, dude. You know, the place is great. Her. Yeah, freaking. Uh, I just she, I just ran into Tony over at uh, Dive Bar. Cool. Doing, uh, they got a whole uh, drag queen thing going on. Really? And Tony actually had a drag queen thing going on on the strip again uh, before the pandemic hit. And I think he'll get it back up and running. Wow. Wow. So wow. once he does, I'm gonna have him on the show. There was a hamburger Mary's here for a while too. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. It was on um it was on Flamingo. I think it was open for like three months and then the pandemic hit. Ugh. 
I don't know if you know about that place. No, it's, it's like it's like it's like a, a, like a burger. It's like a burger joint, but yeah. they have drag shows. Oh, really? Yeah, I used to go to the one in Texas all the time, dude. I had a friend <laughs> one that was in the show, dude. Greatest shows ever, dude. They're it's so just debauchery, man. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, you know, I have friends that used to look at me like weird, like why are you going to a place like that? Yeah, because it's fun. It is. Are you kidding me? Most people don't know this, but I had a brother that he. He took his own life, but I had a gay brother. Oh, okay. And uh, Sorry to hear you took his life. Eh, I didn't know that. It sucks. You know, but it was years ago. It happened, and it was a really shitty reason it happened. But my family really didn't accept him and stuff, so it was pretty ugly. I don't want to bring the podcast down, though. But anyway, oh, yeah. We, we, used to go to this place, we used to go to this place in New York called Kiss. It was a gay bar. Yeah. Uh, all the time. We'd hang out there. All, the fucking best bar I've ever been to in my life, dude. It was awesome. The vibe was always fun. The people were always awesome. Never any fights, never any bullshit. You just hang out, be yourself, and be cool, dude. Yeah. Greatest thing in the world. Yeah, gay bars awesome. are a freaking yeah. blast, man. So much fun. So much fun. The very yeah. first time he took me there, he had 11 of his friends follow me into the bathroom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's the one thing. And again, they all surrounded me when I got around the, the urinal. I'm like, I'm like, what is this? <laughs> Initiation yeah. time, young man. I was oh, like, God. what? <laughs> So funny, dude. Yeah. All, the best, the best times ever in that place, dude. Oh, I miss it. I miss, so miss it. So miss it. Uh, it's just a party, man. Yeah. Those are people that want to have a fucking good time. Hell yeah. And they don't got that big, uh, there's there's this other attitude when you're at like, you know, like I love the dive bar, but when you're at a dive bar, you know, a lot of the people are like, yeah, like tough guy, come on. you know, and it's like, no one's going to dance or cause they don't want to, you know, it's just like, everybody's just trying to like, dude, you're pissing face. in the same urinal I am. Yeah, Stop. Puff their fucking chest out. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like, don't you know how fucking cool I rode a Harley here. And it's just like, uh, right. great, man. Yeah. Nice. Great. Good, Good for you. you. Yeah. Uh, but you know, you go to something like Crave or something like that, and everyone's just fucking. I used to host the Goth Night at dancing Crave. in foam, and no one gives a shit. And Dude, I, love I, that. I used to host the Goth Night at Crave. Did you? Me and this guy Barnaby. Yeah, it was me, this guy jo- me, Josh Barnaby, and um, what was that? Other? I can't remember the other guy's name. But we used to do Sanctuary over there on Friday nights. We used to do it there. That's yep. awesome. It was awesome. We had a great time. We did it for like three years. It was great. Yeah. Dude, that guy, that, that guy, um, the vampire Don, you remember that guy? He was on that sci-fi show, that sci-fi reality show where they got like all the freaks of nature people. And it was years ago. I can't remember what the name of the show was, but it was like a reality TV show. So they take all these normal people and they bring them into this house. And then they have these guys come in. And one of them happened to be this vampire Don guy. One, of, one guy was the guy with all the puzzle tattoo pieces, you know, all, you know, just freaks. Is it this guy here? Yes, that's Don. Don Henry. Yes. Nice. So, um, so Don moved to Vegas while we were hosting this thing, and Don used to come hang out every Friday night, dude. And he had a whole entourage of people, you know, the whole goth vampire people. And blah, blah, blah. Dude, we had the most fun in that place ever, dude. Oh, this is a and the picture. owners, and the yeah, Don's killer, dude. Nice guy, super nice guy. I I don't know if he still lives here. I haven't talked to him in years, but he probably still knowing him, he probably still lives here. I wouldn't doubt it. But yeah. Yeah, we used to host we used to host Friday night golf night sanctuary at Crave, dude. <laughs> Every Friday night. And the owners of the club were totally cool with it. They loved it, you know. And, but it wasn't it was um so it was Crave Lounge, the place next door. Yeah. Not it wasn't in the big room. Okay. You know, they did the Crave thing over in the big room, but we were in the Crave Lounge. And it was it was great, dude. And the vibe in that place was so cool. I loved that place. It was awesome. I miss it. I miss it a lot. Yeah, hopefully the whole scene will be coming back online full swing again soon. It's Hope pretty, so. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty swinging out there now, man. I mean, yeah, I was just doing, uh, I was doing some events. Uh, it was at Caesar's Palace this week, and they oh, were cool. pretty, they were pretty packed, man. And I know Area 15 was pretty packed a few I times. Still Rockstar Bar has been doing good. Area 15 dope. I just, I everybody tells me my my issue is with my health issues, even though it's kind of. Coming to an end, I tend to try not to go out in public right yeah. now. You know, I just I just don't trust other people. Yeah. You know, I got my shot. I'm vaxxed. Blah, 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 blah. You know, I wear a mask when I go out in public, but I don't, I just don't trust people, dude. I yeah. went to my first movie in two years last week. All right. What'd you see? Shang-Chi. Oh, is that the new Disney uh, Marvel, Marvel thing? The new Marvel thing? Dude, amazing. Is it? Amazing. Check it out. Oh my God, it was great. Yeah. It was phenomenal. I thought it was going to be like, you know, a middle of the road kind of Marvel movie. No. It's up there with like 
Iron Man and the first Captain America. Nice. We, literally, dude, it's really good. I know people are like, well, I don't know about people, but I know the reviews are saying that about like Black Widow. It's the best Marvel movie. No. Yeah. No, Black Widow like, was terrible. No, no, it wasn't. It was terrible. That was fucking it was garbage. terrible. Yeah. <laughs> but. I think that's probably the worst Marvel movie of yeah. the bunch. It was pretty freaking boring. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was, man. Like, uh, come on. Come on. I mean... And like, they, it, it, don't say it's the best Marvel movie either when it's clearly not even close. Not even close. Yeah, like that's terrible. Who are you paying to write? Still, the review? best Marvel movie is Endgame. I don't care what anybody yeah, says. Yeah, Endgame. Totally. Boom at the end. Oh, tears, waterworks, the big whole, time, whole time, dude. And everybody, everybody comes back, uh, and you know, like you get it to opens see up. Yeah, yeah, every yeah, yeah. Marvel superhero ever fighting all those uh, aliens. You know, the moment that gets me every time it's in that just, movie uh, is the end. The very yeah. end. Happy sits down with Morgan, and as she he asks Morgan what what he wants, what she wants, and she goes, "I want a cheeseburger." And I lose it every time. <laughs> I cry like a three year old because it's just that awesome yeah. throwback to the original Iron Man. Yeah. It's so cool, dude. Yeah, all the way back like thirty movies ago yes yeah 10 years man yeah 10 fucking years of movies that was one of the best things ever like <sighs> they just gave it to you man they you really know? did it's they it's like you know of course there's always going to be critics out there who want to shit all over everything but i <laughs> i really feel like the marvel universe the, oh, the avengers um, saga specifically uh i don't count the x-men saga because i'm going to shit all over the x-men movies but uh, i thought two yeah. i thought a couple of the x-men movies were really good logan was great logan was cool was great yeah. i loved logan i mean hugh jackman was the best wolverine he was oh he was born to play wolverine yes, you know absolutely but, uh, he saved every one of those fucking movies. Oh, yeah, he definitely <laughs> did. You know, He made them watchable. Yes. But, uh, yeah, they, they haven't done a good X-Men, but the Avengers saga is fucking phenomenal. phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah, and they just bring it. And even the X-Men ones, I mean, at least they were consistent. They put out the trilogy. They put out yeah. the, new, the new series. You know, they didn't mm -hmm. go, oh, we got a few bad. Someone said something mean on Twitter. Cancel the whole thing. <sighs> like the people over at uh, DC. You know, it's just like, come on. Well, those DC movies haven't been all that great. I thought Aquaman, they, yeah. Aquaman was good. Yeah, you know. The, the first first one Wonder Woman was pretty good. 84 was terrible. Oh, yeah, no. Terrible. I, I, it's, I've watched both, both versions of Zack Snyder's The Snyder Cut and oh, the original. And just, yeah. The, the Snyder Cut was way was better. Way better, yeah. but still, I don't think it was amazing. No, well, and it was four freaking hours. Yeah. And uh, you know, like, come on, man. Yeah, who wants, I just it's it's. I'll I watch thought a Henry Cavill Tarantino movie, but I not. thought Henry Cavill was a great Superman. Yeah, I thought, I thought he it was a great awesome. Superman. I actually liked Man of Steel too. Yeah, you know, with him playing Superman, oh, yeah. I dug it. I thought it was I great. It. I thought it was good. With uh, what was it? Kevin Costner's his yep. dad. Uh huh. Oh, that was a good yeah, movie. Yeah, it was good. I thought it was really good. You know, uh, but again, people shit all over it. I was like, yeah, and then they go, never mind, never mind. And it's just yeah. like fucking stick to your guns, man. Make this, make the trilogy of the Justice League. Cancel much, culture sucks. Yeah, like fucking, and, then, and it's like they made a ton of. I think they made like three hundred million dollars yeah. off the Justice League. Yeah, and they were like, well, it was still not enough. Still yeah. not enough. And it's like it's three hundred million. It's not as much money profit. as Endgame made. Yeah, make the second one. What are you doing, man? Stick to it. it. You know, get I it just to us. I just don't think the DC characters themselves and their storylines lend themselves good to movies. Yeah. The I think Batman that's what it is. Like the, Batman was the only one that really stuck. Well, you know? yeah, because, I mean, you had great guys playing Batman until yeah. you got to George Clooney. But, yeah. <laughs> but uh, Ben Affleck. Yeah, I didn't like Ben Affleck either. Yeah. You know, Although he did get jacked for that role. He got really jacked got for that role, for that. dude. I was, I, was I was impressed with that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. But, uh, Michael Keaton was amazing. Yeah. I thought Val Kilmer was really good, too, in the role. I'd have to agree. You know? And then then you had, what's his Christian face? Christian Bale. Christian Bale was phenomenal yeah. he was like doing the Dark Knight. Oh, yeah. He was definitely Dark Knight. Yeah. You know, it was it was convincing. That universe that they yeah. created, man, I really liked that gritty universe. Christopher Nolan's a genius. Yeah. That's what it they really did a good job. And then you, But then as you go, I, I went and saw The Joker, the Joaquin Phoenix Joker. What did you think of it? I loved it. I thought yeah, it I did was too. great. And then I, I went back and I watched the Dark Knight and I was uh -huh. like this is almost hokey compared to the the darkness the Joker is that the so Joker dark dude yeah so dark it was brutal but that's that's what 
fucking Phoenix's wheelhouse, dude. Yeah, he when he needs to play characters job. like that, dude. It's just he's so convincing. Yeah, he just gets that. He has that ability to just have that completely blank. I'm gonna fucking murder you, stare. <laughs> right? He's so good at it, dude. Oh my uh, god, I love when he plays bad guys. When he plays bad guys like Commodus in um, Gladiator. Oh yeah, phenomenal, dude. Phenomenal. Oh yeah, you just you hate know. him. In oh, Gladiator, you, God, do you hate him so much? He wanted, and when he finally gets it in the end, you're yeah. just like so happy. <laughs> yeah, he does. He does villains yeah. really well. I thought he was a great choice for the Joker. Yeah. I really did. And that's just good acting. And then he plays Johnny Cash, and you just love him to death. He was amazing. You know, and you in just that, relate, dude. and you're just like, oh man, this guy, you know. And it's just what a phenomenal actor he is. Think about it, man. Think about the times we live in, dude. All the yeah. all these amazing people, musicians, actors, and all the shit we get to see. Yeah, we're in heaven. Man. How could you be miserable or as bored? A person, that's how one of the ones that drives miserable? me nuts. Is people are like, I'm bored. It's like, how are you bored? This is the fucking world is incredible. <laughs> There's literally infinite things you could be doing right now, and you're fucking bored. You know, like I. I just don't understand read how a you book. Have, yeah, read Watch a, a book. Read a fucking book. I have I have so many books stacked read. up that I oh, don't dude. have time, and I'm I'm reading two books, three books at a time. Usually, I have diff- different I have places. I have a paper white that's sit, completely full. I can't I put anything else. Frick and grab them, man. Yeah, and I'm always crushing books, man. Yeah, you know the ones I always tell people is, is put a fucking book on the toilet that you shit on. And don't bring your phone in and stare at fucking Facebook. Nope. Read, Read the book. like three pages while you yep. poop. And Absolutely. You'll, you'll, I, it sounds ridiculous. It's, no, but it works. But, dude, you I, you go through books. So if I've read like eight books on the toilet oh, yeah. alone. Just like uh, just just this year. I'm on the toilet so long I'm probably yeah. 16 by now. <laughs> ah, you know, but it's like it's a good way to take that, that, that time, that five to ten minutes you're going to hang out and chill and, and really get some reading done. And yeah. I always bring a book with me everywhere I leave the house. Mm-hmm. And it's just, yeah, it's always right here. Yeah, dude. it's fantastic, always. man. I have, um, what's on here right now? Oh, right now I got, because um, I hadn't read it, the new Thrawn book oh, yeah? that they did, the new Star Wars Grand Admiral Thrawn book. Oh, cool. I haven't, I've read every Star Wars book. They're uh, really good. They are. The books are fantastic. And, and they give you all this backstory that phenomenal. you never knew about Star Wars. And then when you're watching the movie, you're like, oh, you know what's happening in the background right now. Dude, I, I had a battle of wits with Taylor Carlson. Oh, I'm he's about, a dude. guy to battle wits with. Yes, dude. We keep telling each other we need to sit down and we need to play Star Wars Trivial Pursuit yeah. and see who wins. I have Star Wars Trivial Pursuit. We should, both have, of us, we should do that. Dude, we should totally do it. I'm totally down. I got to invite Taylor on the show. That guy's a brain. I love Taylor, dude. I love that guy. He's great. And uh, yeah, so we have conversations about Star Wars stuff all the time. Because I'm one of the, I've read every book. Like, I can tell yeah. you the name of the company that makes the engines for the X-Wing fighter. I'm oh, that. Wow. I'm that guy, dude. Yeah. I used to I got be schematics like- and the whole deal and, Yeah. Yeah, I got a great I got a great book on the schematics of how yeah. all the ships are put together and everything like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm a freaking dude. nerd about it. And I have the coolest collectible shit I should have brought. I, yeah. oh, I didn't even think about it. Larry Kelly, you remember Larry? Of course, from Telgun. Larry used to work for this company that used to do film restoration, and was something that they had in their warehouse and their archive when they closed down and they threw in the trash was a reel of film. From the original 77 Star Wars. It's the only one in existence. Really? I own it. That's amazing. He gave it to me for my 40th birthday. That's amazing. He knew I was fanatical, and he found it. He was like, oh, I'm going to give this to Jason. Happened to be right around my birthday. Gave it to me for my birthday. Dude, I cried for like two days. (laughs) Just staring at this thing. I was like, there's no way this is real. There's no way. Uh, So what did we do? We took it one day. We took a look at it. and, Dude. Opens up. It's got you know. It's not the movie. Yeah. It's just sections of the movie cut up. You know that they happen to record on that reel. Yeah. So it's got the it's got the opening scene where um, C three PO and R two D two are running across the the thing with the laser bolts. It's got um, Luke looking through the gl- the glasses for the sand people. It, it's got so many cool scenes on it, dude. Yeah, and it's so got cool. the original Han shooting first. Oh yeah. That's a ridiculous thing that Disney did. <laughs> ridiculous. Like, come on, But it's on, on man. this reel, dude. It's there he's originally a drug as it was. Smuggler. I know. Of course he's going to shoot someone who's going to try to take, his ho- take him of hostage. Course. He's he's not a good guy. No. You know? Definitely not. He's, he's not a bad guy. No. But that's one of the things about Star Wars is that it, 
it it fucks with that that dualism characteristic yes. where you're like, oh well, well clearly these are the good guys and the empire's the bad guys, and it's like. Well, I mean, as far as the Empire is concerned, they're doing the universe a solid. You know, they're yep. bringing order to the universe. They're, from their perspective, they're they're really doing a, from their point of view. Yeah, they're really doing a a, a, a service for everything. Yeah. You know, and and from and from the rebels' point of view, you know, they're stopping that. But from right. the Empire's point of view, they're disrupting and bringing chaos back in, and they're. You know, anti That duality in those movies yeah. is so cool, dude. And Han sits right in the middle of like, I don't need any of this bullshit. I know that you're- But I'm a good this guy. Is, <laughs> this is a joke, and this is a joke, and I don't need to associate with any of this. I'm looking out for me. Yeah. I'm going to make sure that I'm doing okay because none of this matters. Yep. I always loved Han. Yeah, me too. Yeah, he's always my favorite, yep. man. Uh, don't get me wrong. I'm a big Luke fan. I'm a big Raider fan, but Han is like the guy, dude. Yeah. He's, he's just oh, yeah. a badass. Oh, yeah. And hanging out with Chewie, and he, sp- and he speaks uh, yeah. whatever- Kashyyyk. That, Kashyyyk, yeah. Yeah, yeah, is what the language would be. Yeah, and, I'm terrible, dude. I know yeah, it all. Man. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, dude, yeah. I mean, he's he's a fucking gangster in those movies. Yeah, he's man. great. I love him. It's amazing. And he's just so nonchalant, and he's hitting on a princess like a fucking of a, of a planet. It's and he's just, just like, so Harrison Ford. You know, of he, course you're he's into me. He's just himself. Yeah, and that's what makes it brilliant. Yeah, you know, even even when he plays like Indiana Jones or in Blade Runner. Yeah, you know, he's always that nonchalant guy, and it's fucking great. Oh yeah, you know, you know another actor. We I get, love We got to, we got to see in our lifetime. Yeah, my God, dude, he was fantastic. Yeah, even in it, even in his non nerdy roles. Oh, absolutely, he did a good job. You know? Absolutely, love it. Yeah, you know, but yeah, man, we're lucky to be alive when we're alive. Oh yeah, it's so much amazing day is the, stuff. Every dude. day is literally the best day it's ever been to be a human. Tomorrow, it's going to be even better to be a human than today. And it's just it's just ramping up exponentially for Absolutely. us. Absolutely, and uh, and we're we're heading to an amazing, amazing future, man. You know, I mean, there's a lot of terrible shit going on in the world. There'll always be terrible shit going on in the world. And all that needs to yeah. happen is people need to just stop fucking talking about it on Facebook. Yeah, and we'll be okay. Yeah, the shit that's going on now has always gone on. It has. The big difference. You didn't have a voice before. Yeah. And you weren't able to see it. Yes. At, like instantaneously, instantaneously, you know, it was just, just fucking all the way up until like, uh, the internet was, you know, really established and you could, you could yeah. see everything real time going on around the world. It was just like out of sight, out of mind. Yep. Total chaos in Africa, you know, total Absolutely. chaos in the Middle East, you know, fucking China's, yep. it has a slave labor pool going on. Yep. You have no idea. You have no idea. You and know? now you it's see like, it all 24-7. Let's go seven. see the new Terminator movie. <laughs> yeah. Know, it, it, Dude, I wrote a song about it two years ago. Yeah. I worked with, um, I worked with, you know Brendan Shane? Yeah. He was, yeah. I worked with Brendan on it. We did, a, we did a song together called Poison in the Well. Yeah. And it's all about social media. Huh? It's all about how toxic social media is and that's what the whole song is about. It really is, you know? man. It's it's terrible. Yeah. Dude, I take long breaks from Facebook. And it's not just because I get banned from Facebook because <laughs> I speak my mind. But, you know, but I, I literally, like, I'm on, I'm on a big Facebook break right now. And the only thing I'm doing on Facebook right now is I'm promoting the, I'm promoting the record company. That's what it's the for. I hope that's it what gets, it should be I hope for. that's what it gets to. It's like, I, you know, I, I did something good in my life. I have a thing coming up, you know. Yep. It's like. It should be the poster board at like the local, you know, I don't need to watering know, hole. I don't need to know what you're fucking eating for dinner tonight. No. I don't need to know this. You don't okay, if, okay, maybe everybody. maybe if Gordon Ramsay came to your house and cooked you a nice meal, okay, I get it. Uh, yeah. But I don't need to see your fucking meatloaf on a plate. No. <laughs> no. I don't need to hear you regurgitate your opinion about yes. the news. Yes. Right? And it's like if I wanted to hear what fucking CNN or what Fox had to say, I'll fucking watch, watch CNN em. or Fox. You know, you yep. don't have to repeat it to me and act like you thought of it. I'm yeah. on this. I'm on this whole thing, like, dur- like, okay, during the entire Trump administration. Yeah. I, you know how it is. One side just hates the other, fully, completely divided down the middle. Blah 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 blah. Well, that's how they want it. That's how. And it's, I, it, of course, it's, it's encouraged. Right. Of course. But I have friends of mine that don't want to be friends with me because I'm friends with somebody else. Yeah, that's ridiculous. You know, I'm. That's their fucking problem. Though. Yeah, that's your problem. Then don't be friends with me. You know what I tell them? I don't give a fuck what you think. I can yeah. have red and blue friends. Yeah. It's okay. It's not, it's, it doesn't have to be like that. We should have a different, 
uh, opinion. If everybody walked around and had the same opinion about everything, what the fuck would the world be? Are we robots? No. 1984. That's yeah, what exactly. 1984. And that's what that's what everybody's trying to do, man. And yep. now it's the it's the vaccine mandate now, you know? And it's like, oh. whatever side you're on of that, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's divisive. Yeah, you're and either going to do it or you're not. it's intentionally divisive. Yeah, and it's like when, when that kind of wears off, there'll be a new thing that's divisive. Yes. And as long as they can keep us at each other's throats, we're not fucking we're going not po- after all the well, politicians yeah, who we're not paying attention to what the they're doing. Jar. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, and they're up there <laughs> robbing us blind. It's 100%. like one hundred percent. What are they? They're asking for like three and a half trillion dollars to taxpayers. You want to have a great conversation about this infrastructure stuff? Infrastructure deal. Mason out on the podcast. Yeah, Mason Ed did come on. We talked oh, about that. Oh, dude. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, how much of that money are they going to steal? You know, how much of that are they going yeah. to? They're gonna they're gonna send that over to different uh different charities or you know qu- you know special schools, interest special groups. interest groups <laughs> and then those special interest groups are going to contribute ten million dollars a piece back to their campaign yep. funds and it's just like they're gonna take you know that that if they get three and a half trillion dollars they're gonna take two trillion dollars and it's gonna go in their fucking pockets of course and then meanwhile we're arguing about whether or not you like Trump or you got a fucking shot in your arm. And no one's doing it's anything been about this them way since the 70s. Blind. Been this way since yeah, the 70s. And that's the big problem. And yep. like, dad, I fucking knew people in the, um, during the Trump administration, I, I would run into people and like, one in particular drove me nuts. This woman was so proud of herself too. And she fucking divorced her husband because he voted for Trump. It's like, you divorced your husband over politics over politics over a difference of opinion and it's like wow fucking grow up what are you six years old you know everybody's got to think the same <laughs> way you do you're right you're 100 percent right about everything you know what you're talking about nobody, i couldn't even fathom that nobody knows anything you know we all just have an opinion you know you can't really you don't you, you, none of us know anything that's going on in this world it's fucking hyper complex and all the information's fucking concealed and fucking and it's all you know, false information yeah and it's like why would you do that to the people in your fucking life man the self righteous attitude is insane to me it's face- like love man love yes i saw a post on facebook yesterday it made me made me think about something so there's this there's a buddy of mine amp repair guy in town mm-hmm. and he posted something about um, the covid thing and people were just like well i got my shot i'm immune now <laughs> no you're not I'm, no you're not <laughs> so i just i just simply posted the thing i said the vaccine doesn't make you immune. It just makes it less severe if you get it. Yeah. Okay, you can still be a carrier. You can still get it. Please go to this link, the CDC link, yeah. and read what the vaccine actually does. Yeah. That's all I said. Next thing you know, fuck you. You're a fucking asshole. Who the yeah. fuck are you? Blah, blah, blah. And I just ignored it. I was just like, yeah. why you got to be like that? And meanwhile, you just said you got the shot. You, you know, you're out doing it. And it's just I'm, like. I'm sitting here just trying like to me. inform you. That's all I'm yeah. trying to do. I'm trying to give you the proper anybody. Right. No, because everybody knows everything anybody. already. Yeah. They all have Facebook doctorates. Yeah, exactly. Facebook Here's half. Of, I read half a Wikipedia article and now I'm an expert. I'm an expert. Yeah. Wikipedia. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking goddamn. <laughs> Only thing Wikipedia is good for is finding out who produced the record. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, crazy that's, dude. That's uh, that's one of my core mantras in my that I keep rolling around in my head is I am nothing. I know nothing. Yep. Don't walk around thinking that you know what the fuck you're talking about because nope. I don't. I got an opinion. That's the that's the best I can do. I have an opinion, and I'm not going to say it's right or not. But I let, yeah, the, let I somebody have. let them decide yeah. if they want to take your opinion as the gospel. Yeah. Okay. That there shouldn't be no such thing as I as a I gospel. Agree. I think you know. I agree. Like it's like. Fucking just, we're all going to get a bunch of information thrown just at us. Just be, dude. Yeah. Just, just be. be. And just love be. everybody. And don't let it fucking separate you. Know, or separate your society, man. You know, we should all be taking care of each other. And But when people do evil shit, you got to call them out, though. Yeah. You know? When people do evil shit. Yeah. I would, I would agree 100% on mm-hmm. that, man. You know? And it's got to be like, evil shit, though. It can't be like the dude went out and fucking stole five bucks from his friend. That's no. Nah, 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 nah. no. I'm talking about evil shit. Yeah. You know, cheating on your wife, fucking, you know, <laughs> killing somebody, hurting somebody. That kind of shit's got to be called out all yeah. the time. Violence isn't acceptable, nope. man. Nope. I agree. 100%. That's just, that's just a, uh, absurd, you know, but... Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a crazy world out there, and I hope people come to their senses sooner than later, man. Ooh, baby, baby, it's a wild world. Yeah, it, it's it's absurd to me that we're still so divided as a country, and uh, 
and people are still taking these strong stances of if you don't agree with every fucking thing I say, you you can't we can't be fucking friends anymore, man. I don't get it. Yeah, yeah, that just blows my mind, man. That's like that's a six year old. You're not gonna be friends with me because I don't like the Hulk. Yeah, <laughs> it's essentially what it is. <laughs> it's right? What it is. It's exactly that's what it is. Fucking a, man. It's that's what a, it is, that's dude. That's the best. That's the best metaphor I can, you can come up with, right? <laughs> Fuck you, we, man. Fuck you, man. You don't like the Hulk. Fuck you. We can't be friends. Yeah. Oh, Who cares? Who cares? You know, you're not going to be my best friend because you don't think Empire Strikes Back is the best Star Wars movie ever? Yeah. Who cares? All right? Who the fuck cares? It doesn't matter. No, it doesn't. Let me ask you a question. How much does it affect your paycheck? It doesn't. Mm. How much does it affect your, your family at home? Yeah. It doesn't. Yeah. It shouldn't matter. When it actually affects you and starts to hurt hurt you and harm you, yeah. that's when you worry about it. Yeah. I don't care what asshole said on Twitter fucking four years ago. I don't give a shit. Yeah. Did he go and do something stupid? No, he just said something stupid on social media. Okay, people do that shit all the time. I got banned from Facebook like a month ago because I complimented some, somebody for not being an asshat. <laughs> They'd said something intelligent. And I said, okay, fine. You know, you're smart enough to not be an asshat. Yeah. And I got banned for 30 days for giving somebody a fucking compliment. Because <laughs> some jackass out there reported it. Uh, yeah. I gave it somebody a fucking mind. compliment. And somebody lost their mind over that shit. I, uh, I, got, I got some notifications recently. I guess they've gone through everybody's old ent posts. Uh, entire yeah. old posts. And so, like, I used to belong to a group called The Villain Cult. And it's a <sighs> private group. And uh, and I'm not into this anymore because I you know I've I've gone through some some growth in my life, but it was where you post the most horrible shit you can find, horrible Terri memes and yeah 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 memes. I get it I get it yeah and it's for comedic purposes it's for comedic right. purposes right. and it's a private group right it's, like it's 4chan for more intelligent people yeah well I wouldn't go that far <laughs> we weren't exactly intelligent but uh, but offensive for sure but it was a private group right and we were posting to each other. And like all of a sudden, just one day, I, I I'm like going to put my my podcast on Facebook, and then there's a bunch of notifications like, oh, looks like people like what I'm doing, and they're like, fucking blocked, 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 and all this stuff, and they're just like, you can't post this stuff, and I was like, that was like nine years ago, man. What the hell? To a yep. private group of people that yep. all wanted to see that kind of shit. Yep. It was, you know, it wasn't like it was consensual. It, it wasn't on yep. my feed. Nope. You know, I wasn't blasting that out to the world. Right. Yeah, and uh, and that that level of censorship, man, where they can it's, just, it's just, yeah, it's 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 gross, man. It it's is morose, man. Like you, it's 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 a dark path to where everyone has to has to conform to this whatever the fuck they decide the new rules are today. No, right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's it's horrible. Man. It's not even full of consistency. No, it's not. You know, and, just getting banned for some for complimenting somebody that they're not an yeah, ass hat. I mean, come on. That's ridiculous. Come on. It's it's a it's a, a civil discord. <laughs> well, you said you were gonna kill his fucking family. No, no, <laughs> no. Literally, I said, all right, dude. All right, you're intelligent. You're not an ass hat. And boom. Yeah. Somebody had a problem with that. They'll block you for anything, man. Anything. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. It is what it is. I mean, don't get me wrong. I've said some shit on Facebook that I got banned for, and it was yeah. good. I should have been banned for it. There's reasons for it. Not like, not like crazy out of fucking <laughs> this world crazy. No hate shit, really. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, you know, getting in arguments with people over stuff and just being like, oh, you're a fucking douchebag. Yeah. Okay, fine. You banned me for 30 days for that, whatever. Okay. I, I, I shouldn't have gone that far. I get it. Yeah. Okay. Fine. But I called the drummer. Okay, so I'm having, a, I'm having a conversation with the drummer from Smashing Alice, Jay. Yeah. Me and Jay are having a, a, a conversation, and he, um, he bought a Habs jersey because he's originally from Canada. So he gets his Habs jersey. And I'm like, oh, look at you representing the motherland. And he's like, yeah, 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 I'm representing the motherland. Well, I said, I thought you were a Vegas Knights fan. He's like, yeah, but I'm originally from Canada. Blah, blah, blah. I said, fucking Canadians. <laughs> and I got banned for 120 days on Facebook for saying fucking Canadians as a joke. Jesus. I got a 120 day ban on Facebook for saying fucking Canadians as a joke. That's ridiculous. Can't say that. Not yeah. allowed. Not allowed. No, you're a bigot now. You're a bigot. <sighs> Labeled forever. Fucking maple syrup drinking motherfuckers. 
<laughs> it's crazy, dude. Just it's amazing. It's amazing the shit that happens. It uh, blows my mind. Yeah, oh, it's just a world God. full of uh, people that can't that can't handle an actual conversation. They man. can't. They, everything's just got to be fucking cherry syrup, or they're just just gonna go cry to mommy about it, man. And it's like the real world is brutal. You need your safe space. Yeah, there there are no safe spaces, man. This is it's a, not how life works. It's an eat or be eaten world. It is. And it's a beautiful world. But it is. It is chaos. It is chaos. There's no such thing as utopia. Nope. There's no such thing as, as anything going to, you know, be in 100% any Perfection one person's does way. does not exist. Yeah. It's, it's, it's chaos and it's beautiful and mm -hmm. you can either be uh, engulfed by it. Or you can take advantage of the chaos, yeah. you know, and you can and you can conform it to your desire or whatever. But yep. the whole thing of like, uh, I'll just, I can't handle this, so the whole world has to change around me is literally crybaby shenanigans. See, I agree, hundred percent. And, and it's never going to happen. But we're conservatives because we think that. I am a conservative. I'm kind of not. I'm moderate. Yeah. I'm moderate as, as they come. I used to be moderate, man. And now, uh, after all the fucking democratic socialism and communism bullshit, I am, <laughs> for the first time in my life, I, I was You're never like, one side or the right, other. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I would always register independent. And now I'm a registered Republican, man. Wow. Yeah. I fucking, wow. I, I'm not ashamed to admit it, man. Dominic's you know? going to love you. Yeah. No, <laughs> I, I, I fucking voted for Trump, you know, all that shit, like constitutional rights, baby. Wow. But uh, yeah, it's it's just a fucking crazy world out there, man. I and firmly like, believe that I want my guns. Yeah. And you got to stay out of women's vaginas. Hey, That's the way I feel about go. it. <laughs> Give me my guns and there stay out go, of the vaginas. Like, we're good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the fucking abortion argument's ridiculous. Oh, it's crazy. Because it's like both sides have a good point. Yeah. Neither one of them's ultimately the 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 one the one true fucking right side to be right. on. Right. It's like, yeah, women have a right to do what they want with their body. Yes. But also, you're killing a baby. No. Yeah. But don't say, oh no no no, it's my body. But I'm not. It's like no, kill your baby, <laughs> but you don't get to feel good about it. You killed your baby. I you can you can have the right to kill your baby, but I we totally don't get to get say that, that it's not a baby. You know, like you're just right. like trying to make yourself feel better or with you know fucking running circles around words and writing laws around. It's like now go. I mean, fucking rats eat their babies. Birds throw their fucking. But we shouldn't out of talk nests. about this. Yeah, no, no. Because we're white men. We're white men. Men can get. <laughs> don't you know that men can get pregnant, Jason? This is a new world we live in. <laughs> I know, right? Google it. It says it's so crazy. on Google. It's crazy. Yeah. It's dude, wild it's so shit, fucked man. up, dude. So, yeah. This is what social media has done to people. Yeah. This is social media's fault. It is. Well, and it's it's great to have a, a place where people can have a pool of ideas, man. I, I agree then, with that. Like trying to bring those fucking batshit ideas into law. Is a whole nother thing. It's like, uh, come on, we all know the earth is flat. Yeah, come exactly. On. Exactly. Come on, we all I mean, know all you have flat. to do is walk outside and look at it. It's flat. It's completely flat. Yeah. Fuck, fuck gyroscope. <laughs> fuck satellites. Fuck gravity. Yeah. Fuck gravity. Yeah, none of that. Sh it's science. I only need I only need science when I want to force you to stick a fucking experimental drug in your arm. That's the only time I need science. <laughs> That's fucking great. Yeah. Fucking oh, mess yeah. we live in, man. Dude. Throw it's... logic out the window. Yes. We need more Vulcans on this. I was planet. just going to say we need more Spocks in this world. I was literally just about to say that. Uh, <laughs> oh, great minds think alike. That's it's right, awesome. bro. Awesome. Yeah. It's, it's, it's fucking hilarious to me, man. It is. You know? It completely is. And, uh, and, you know, everyone will say, uh, you know, they try to throw around the bigotry and you're fucking racist. And it's like in the same conversation, we're just talking about how much we love going to gay clubs. And Hell yeah. I was talking about hanging out with my black trans friend, Tony. And it's just like, yeah, fuck you, man. Like, oh, so dude, I get people don't fit into two categories. Everybody is this unique thing that has all these unique perspectives of the world. And it's like there isn't side A and side B. Right. There's side one through eight billion. Mm -hmm. and, I agree. I'm fucking Fully agree. Yeah. Like I've been I've been a support put everyone in boxes. I've been a supporter of the LGBTQ plus community forever. Yeah. I used to teach at the Gay and Lesbian Center here in town, you know, do all kinds of shit. And um, 
of course, now there's some people saying that I'm just saying that so that I have credibility. No, that's not why I'm saying it. But there's a whole, there's a whole thing that's going on now in that community where it's not okay to be a cisgendered white male. Yeah. You know, we're not allowed to have opinions. Oh, yeah. You know? Well, guess what? Fuck you. Yeah. I have opinions because yet yeah, while no, I haven't lived through you uh, what you have gone through. I do not understand what you have gone through because I'm cisgendered and I'm white and I'm a male. I fully agree with that, 100%. But I can empathize with your problem. Allow me to do that. Allow me to support you. Allow me to be there for you in your time of need. Dude, I get so much shit from people. Yeah. For being white, for being a male, and being cisgender. Well, it's all the labels they just throw on everything, man. Exactly. It's like, and remove this the all these labels. And then everybody's, everybody's yeah. the fucking same. I, like, instead of having 67 different flavors of sexuality, how about we have zero flavors of sexuality? And, and you, you just do what you want to fucking do. Have sex with whoever you want. Yeah. And don't make it your fucking identity. You know? Like, yeah. I mean, you have sex with people you're attracted to, and I have sex with people I'm attracted to. And that's the end of it. Okay, great. And we're both people still. Yes. Why do I care who you fuck? Right. Why does it define you as a person? It shouldn't. Yeah. But in the society the we live with in today, skin it color. does. Yes. You know, like that one. It that one hits home for me you really as, hard. It de- shouldn't define you as a person in any way, shape, or form, yeah. man. I know that there's different cultural scenarios that we are all placed in, but yes, society's a fucking bitch. I grew up in an extremely racist family. Yeah. It, Oh my god, yeah. it was terrible. I grew up in fucking terrible. I grew up in Stockton. It's like one of the most racist places. You there and Brandy. Is. Yeah. 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 Right. Brandy knows, yeah. man. They used to have a thing called fucking White Wednesday at the high school yep. I would go to where they would just beat the shit out of random white kids for being white. You know, but you can't be racist against white people, right? And it's just like that argument fucking blows my goddamn mind. Or the word You can be racist racism. against anybody. Yeah. It's just it's it's just being an asshole because someone's skin color is different than you. It's right. as simple as that. Correct. Or like the fucking concept of uh, reverse racism, I think, is a hilariously stupid fucking word that yeah, people who think they're better than everybody came up with. It's like, no, it's reverse racism because you're being racist to a white person. And it's like, what? So you're saying you're special because you're white? You have to right. make up your own fucking word? It's just racism, man. You're just a person. It's racism. Yeah. It it's shouldn't fucking, exist. You're not special. Don't hate people. Don't people. Yeah. Don't hate people because of their religion. Don't re- hate them for their sexual preference. Don't yeah. hate them for their skin color. And don't hate them for their beliefs. Yeah. It's very simple to do. It's not difficult. Yeah. So you don't agree with it. Don't force your bullshit down my throat. I won't force my bullshit down yours. We can still be friends. We both agree that Star Wars is the greatest movie of all time. We both agree that the fucking Incredible Hulk is awesome. We both agree <laughs> that the fucking X-Men movies sucked. We uh, both agree that fucking, you know, we both like steak. We both like fucking vegetarian meals. Whatever it happens to be. Yeah. Focus on the things that bring you together and don't divide you. Yeah. If you focus on those things, the world will be a much better place. I love it. Much better place. Fucking love, man. Yeah. And that's I what think, it comes down to. I think that's the perfect way to end the fucking podcast. Man. I agree. Because I think we were Because we were supposed to end like fucking, what, we were, 40 like, minutes ago? Like almost an hour ago, I said we were going to end it. And then we keep talking. I told you this is what happens. We start having oh, it's, fun. Oh, shit. Yeah, it has been a whole yeah, other hour. Yeah. Wow. We start having fun, and it just goes and goes and goes, man. It's fun Crazy. to just sit and talk with your friends. It man. is. It's great. Especially so. friends we haven't you, you haven't talked to in a while. I know. Yeah, we got to kick it more often. We got to throw that party, man. Dude, I, I'm, I'm fucking totally take down, bro. Yeah. I'm totally down. Oh, dude, it'll be fun. We'll get all our fucking buddies' fans totally together. Down. And... I will, I, well, you don't eat meat, but I'll smoke up some vegetables for you. There you go. Thank you, bud. Thank you. I don't know, dude. I cook like a motherfucker, and I got vegetarian friends that come over and eat stuff all the time. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, the, the veggie I mean, thing was a was just a blessing, man. I I I, did I it couldn't for, do it. I did it for health reasons. I did it for spiritual reasons. Right. And uh, and I just I've never felt better in my life. Like, for real. Like, it's just, uh, it's all an experiment for me, man. Like, I'll do whatever the hell I have to do to have the happiest life. And for a long time, I thought there was all the drugs in the world and party, party, party. And you sex, were young, sex, Jason. Sex with random people. You were young. And it's like, none of that really fucking did it, you know? And, like, being clean and pure and, like, eating vegetables and, and just, like, living the sober life and exercising and meditating. Right. All of a sudden, life is so good. Doing the Reiki, too? 
Uh, not yet. I, I mean, I, dude, you know, I'll check that. I know Tommy, uh, Tommy Elliott was really yes, into Reiki. the shit. Bro. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, there's all these energies going on around us, man. Just because you can't I'm way it. into the metaphysical yeah. thing. Yeah. You know, just because, it's just because our five senses can't pick up on it doesn't right. mean that that's the end all be all of everything that's in existence. It just means that we can't prove that it's there with our five senses. And it's just like fucking Ben get Kenobi over yourself. said it best. Your eyes can deceive you. Don't trust them. Yeah. <laughs> that's it, man. That is it. So, yeah, it's been great. So It all comes back to Star Wars. We're going to be fucking partying. Star Wars is like the atheist Bible, dude. <laughs> totally. Is what it is, it man. totally you is. Know? There's a lot of, like, spiritual reference and and uh, and culture that comes with, with Star Wars whenever Agreed. you're, like... Like, I grew up... Uh, I came up, like, super atheist. I'm not anymore, mm -hmm. but... Uh, but that was definitely my my spirituality with Star Wars and my morality, my source of morality and all these ethics and everything, they all like kind of stem from Star Wars and the Jedi and all that stuff. Think about it. It all makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's a, it's funny, man. It's fun being a nerd. It's fun talking to you. We're going to, yeah. we're going to end up doing a whole nother hour. I know. We got to stop. We got to stop. We got to stop. So we'll party, at, party at Constantine's house. I'm totally down, dude. Whenever you want. I want to thank my guest, Jason Constantine. Thank you for having me, bro. You're the fucking man. You are the fucking man. Uh, definitely check out uh, tonehouserecords.com and jasonconstantine.com and Jason Constantine official uh, at YouTube where he is the pod father. Craziness. I love it. Craziness. Uh, I look forward to some of the new albums you're working on out of your studio, man. And uh, yeah, make sure you uh, hit subscribe, give us a like, ring the bell, follow us on social media, follow Mr. Constantine on social media. This has been To the Fullest with uh, Jason Froberg. Peace. Thanks for watching To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. You can check out more podcasts here and subscribe by clicking right here. We air new podcasts every Monday morning on Space Brain Station and all of your favorite podcast apps.